ਦੇ ਲਿਆ ਆ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੂੰ ਉਹਦੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ
गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल आई आपिता कांशुल सिन्हा आई आपिता कविता फ्रॉम आई सी आई एस डी जी वुड लाइक टू वेलकम यू ऑल टू आई सी आई एस डी जी कॉन्फ्रेंस ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू वी वुड लाइक टू वेलकम ऑल एस टीम गेस्ट प्रेजेंटर्स टीचर्स एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स We now request Principal Dheer Sanodra Sir and Architect Ravindra Sir Naik to escort the chief guests, Architect Vinit Mirkar, Principal of IES COA, Architect Nilesh Dulakia, IIA Chairman of Mumbai Chapter, Principal of TPS uh, Yogini Ma'am, National Co Convener of In Think India, Akamsha Varde on the dais, and offer flowers to Goddess Saraswati. Audience, please give a big hand to them. It's our holy tradition to worship our goddess Saraswati before any important event. So let's dedicate a prayer to Ma Saraswati. For that, I would like to invite the students. I request everyone to stand up for the Saraswati Mandana.
कौन सा लाइट ऑफ जो कर्टन स्क्रीन नहीं दिख रहा है ना आपको हो जाएगा अभी Uh, now I would like to tell you a little about uh, ICISDG. So, first let I'd like to say greetings from Mumbai to all of them attending over here, online and offline. On behalf of the team of ICISDG and ASAP, I extend a very warm welcome to all who are attending, either in presence or in absence. And this is a multidisciplinary conference which aims at illustrating the potential mm -hmm. of the research communities for mm -hmm. achieving the sustainable ah, development yeah, goals which were declared by the United Nations in 2018 as binding for 193 nations who are under developed and developed countries. The objective is to emphasize how research community can and must play a significant role through the SDGs, which should be achieved as projected by the UN by 2030 through the theme, the salutogenic SDGs. The salutogenic approach refers to an approach to wellness, focusing on health and not disease. So the focal point here should be on finding out solutions and not just telling about the problems. This, propose, this conference proposes to give an overview of some of the existing efforts along with innovative resolutions, ideas and research in this area and its written post-conference report as an appeal to professionals, scientists and government organizations globally to take a holistic approach on the derived data. This activity desires to monitor and generate the effects of research work on the SDGs by the community until now and update it in a report format and proceedings. It will definitely be an enabler to identify more efficient resource handling, defecation, societal framework and business operations, reinforcing the economy which is a critical success factor for achieving the SDGs. This is an ideal opportunity for young professionals to voice their views and offer fresh perspective and join the worldwide movement of ensuring a sustainable future by bridging the gap with the policy makers, academicians, professionals and publication opportunities of their research in peer-reviewed conference proceedings with ISBI and selected few in the Scopus Index journals. The UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development being leave no one behind. So all are included and all are requested to be a part of it in some way or the other. This conference is the brainchild of Vijay Lakshmi Charitable Trust, which strives to create personalities and wisdom by providing research and knowledge ventures, venture platforms for global aspirants. It has been conceptualized with the need of promoting sustainability in all areas and fields. It has a vision to provide the sustainable solutions for challenges faced by society. The motive is to create a world that is self-content and make available such circumstances through educational revolution that preservation of the planet will be a part of lifestyle itself. The organization committee has on board architect Ravina Sarnai, founder principal of Shilpa Sagar Academy, Architect Mohan Nikam, former director of SPPCOA, Architect Prashant Deshmukh, founder and CEO of PDA, Dr. Sunil Thakte, former director of State Institute of Urban Development, Mr. Chetan Narake, DITP Ministry of Commerce, Engineer Ajay Korani, President Association of Architects and Engineers, Architect Dheeraj N. Salotra, Principal Thakur College, Thakur School of Architecture and Planning, Mr. Sunil Gatade, Chairman KDLS and Vice Chairman NBS Pune. We have a global advisory on board also from countries of like India, UK, Hong Kong, Australia, Thailand, Iran, USA, Malaysia, Japan, Iraq and Indonesia. We are supported in various forms by United Nations Academic Impact, Governor Maharashtra, Thakur School of Architecture and Planning, NACCIA IIA Mumbai, AESA, Shilpa Sagar Academy, Rotary Esri South Asia, Vishwa Niketan and Think India. And MET 
University also. Now I ask Architect Anshur to tell about his. Thakur Education Group is the visionary founding of Sri V.K. Singh Ji. As the chairman of the trust, starting with first school in 1989, the trust has now more than 21 institutions under its banner. The trust is serving to a strength of over 50,000 students studying under a variety of programs and levels from KG to PhD programs. The trust is known to provide state-of-the-art infrastructure at par with the international standards. This campus is under Zardu Singh Charitable Trust with five institutions under its umbrella. CEO of TG, Shri Karan Singh Sir, is a visionary leader and a constant source of inspiration and direction to all its institutions. The Thakur College of Engineering and Technology is a well-established institution with NAC A grade and a history of laurels for patenting, innovation, placement, research and awards at national and international levels. The Thakur Institute of Management in Computer Application is also NAC A plus accredited institution with high ranking. Thakur Global Business School is an emerging institution with involvement of international exposure and collaboration. Thakur School of Architecture and Planning is a co-host for the program as the venue partner for the event. We look forward for the great participation from all the delegates and attendees in two days of conference to follow. We now request Principal Dheeraj Salotra sir to felicitate our guest architect Vineet Merkar sir and architect Nilesh sir. We now request the principal of Thaku School of Architecture and Planning to kindly address us. And it's a wow factor to have you all here. 
In fact, you are the agent of the program because when we discuss the agent of future and you are the future and we are here to make sure that things are in the right perspective for you all. So, you are the guest for the event and this event is for you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Those were inspiring words indeed. I now request architect Ravindra Sarnayak, sir, to come and address the audience. United Nations, 193 nations coming together and uh, putting up the resolution to uh, in front of the world. Uh, this is the utmost important thing that we consider the future. Same as uh, Salotra sir mentioned, we are discussing for your future as we talk about 2030 agenda or 2050 agenda of United Nations. Uh, we look forward to creating a mass movement through this conference based on the UN SDGs, international goals as suggested by the 193 nations, which in turn will sow the seeds of an environmental friendly lifestyle as announced by PM Sri Narendra Modi ji and synchronize government, industry, academia and NGOs to become the wheels of a sustainability vehicle, driving Bharat towards becoming a world leader. Furthermore, as a result of the guidance and strong vision of the respected Minister of Industry, Mr. Uday Samanji, the organization has demonstrated its determination to work on the international MOU with Madagascar as a nation to strengthen the United Nations SDG resolution. We are also grateful to the Honorable Minister of Road, Transport and Highways, Government of India, Mr. Nitin Gadkariji, Department of Industries, Energy and Labour Maharashtra, Mumbai, who has expressed their gratitude to the organizers for organizing this conference, recognizing the need of the hour. <coughs> the country of Madagascar has partnered in this conference, which is the highest achievement for the ICISDG platform. This conference has been able to establish collaborative ties and associations with the United Nations, governments, professional organizations, universities and NGOs until now. Many more are being considered and are in the process of being implemented in the coming years. We wish the ICISDG 2022 team the best of luck and success. We heartily congratulate all team members on their determination and un unwavering efforts in organizing an international conference on introspections of SDGs. We are proud to share the way of thinking that all organizing committee members of all associates have acquired. We thank everyone who contributed directly or indirectly to the charitable cause. It will be valuable for the ICSTG network globally to act as a catalyst for SDG outreach with action-oriented impact. Thank you. Welcome to the ICISDG 2022. Thank you, sir. I'm sure all of them have got inspired listening to you and will start taking steps to becoming a more sustainable person on this planet and make this planet a beautiful place to live in, not only for them, but for the coming generations. We now request Yogini Suvarna, ma'am, principal of Thakur Public School, to please address us. Namaste and joyful morning to this August gathering here today. Let me begin with a small Sanskrit verse from Maha Upanishad. Ayam Bandurayam Neti Ganana Lagu Chetasam Udara Charitanam Tu Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. The key words are Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. The English translation of what I said. Only small men discriminate saying one is a relative and other is a stranger. For those who live magnanimously, 
the entire world constitutes but a family vasudeva kutumbakam if we have to move ahead with the goals of the un sdgs definitely we are a large family and if we are a family every action that we take will take us closer to working to what we do for our, for our own families right it's a social philosophy vasudeva kutumbakam it's emanating from a spiritual understanding that the world of humanity is made of one life energy it stresses interconnectedness of all life importance of treating each other with kindness and compassion it reminds us that all of us are part of one global community what we do to others is what we finally do to ourselves as a family this philosophy of vasudeva kutumbakam seeks to overcome the us versus them mentality the us versus them mentality is the at the root of all conflict all differences inequities violence this concept of global commons underlies the interconnected relationship between man and nature we treat the world as a family and this philosophy can serve as the basis of the ongoing discussion regarding global cooperation for resolving global problems at our educational institutions we prepare the young leaders of tomorrow it is pivotal that these young students are informed and engaged with the global vision for the future over the next decade youth will not only directly experience the outcome of the sdgs but they will be the key driver for the successful implementation of these sdgs for this reason it is vital to raise awareness about the recently adopted 17 sdgs and the 2030 agenda for sustainable development among youth build a platform for discussion create conditions for active en engagement of all the youth in this goal youth all of you students you are not just the beneficiaries of this process you are the essential actors in achieving these goals you have an enormous ability to make the change not only for yourselves but for the society and the rest of the world we cannot support a model of development that exhausts our natural resources and destroys the environment that we coexist in sustainable development which we are speaking of is a model of development that we can maintain and support it's a long term vision that all countries have agreed upon as the best path forward to improve lives of people together the post 2015 agenda for development reflects the ambitions and the visions of vision of young people it also means that young people can and should have a sense of ownership this is the key thing that all of us have to remember a sense of ownership and all of us have to play our part in the collective endeavor to achieve a sustainable world as a school thakur public school is eagerly looking forward I, as soon as i got the call i was surprised and happy when sir said that we are knowledge partners in this wonderful endeavor and we are eagerly looking forward to begin this academic partnership and i'm sure all our students and faculties all the education stakeholders will benefit mutually from this we are confident that this partnership will undoubtedly contribute to our students who are the global uh, citizens of the future making them more responsible aware conscious individuals to help them do the bet their bit for the society and the world thank you
you so much, ma'am, for your kind words, and we definitely look for great partnership ahead. Environment and sustainability education for young children has great potential for fostering the values, skills, and behaviors that support sustainability. We are glad to today standard nine student of Tagore Public School to put forth the views. A very good morning to one and all present here. My name is Anushka Nikhil Deshpande and I'm from Thakur Public School. Today I would like to share my thoughts with all of you regarding the main cause of the sustainability and development goals of the United Nations. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I am one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. I would like to know how many of you actually understood this quote. Because every time that we have read, spoken or seen anything regarding our environment, the term save the earth has always been there. The truth is that we have been informed about the challenges we are facing since the very beginning through the news around us and even our social studies textbooks in school. And we are still unable to do anything about it. Every time that we have skipped a motivational advertisement on YouTube or read a text message on WhatsApp, we know deep down that we aren't doing enough for our environment. But I still see barely anyone trying to change that. And this is why I am here today. I am here to give a voice to our Mother Earth, a cry of help beseeching you to protect our future. And most importantly, I am here with a hope. A hope that I will succeed in educating and inspiring all of you to do more to sustain our planet. The Earth's temperature has been rising by 0 0.14 degrees Fahrenheit per decade since the year 1880. However, since 1981, this rate has increased and doubled. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, which is responsible for recording the temperature, recognized an extremely high rate and marked the year 2021 as the sixth highest since the very beginning. I don't understand why we are so incapable of doing something, anything, to preserve our world because we need to understand that there is no planet B. Climate change is threatening the present and the future of humankind. And to turn this catastrophic situation around, we need strong role models ready to lead the fight. Even our beloved celebrities like Leonardo DiCaprio, Mark Ruffalo and Prince Harry are working hard to create awareness against global warming, promoting it through social media and reaching a larger audience due to their fame. We can do the same. Through our productive lockdown, we have all become technically very well versed and promoting global warming through social media is something we can all do. My personal motivator, however, is Greta Thunberg, who was barely a few years older than I am now when she gave a speech at the United Nations Climate Action Summit in New York. She was the 11-year-old who was so moved by the challenges faced by the wildlife around her that she refused to eat or sleep. And today, I would like to emulate her and quote what she said to the adults neglecting their environmental duty. She said, you are failing us, but the young people are beginning to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. We will not let you get away with this. Right here, right now is where we draw the line. The world is waking up and change is coming whether you like it or not. Thank you. I must say that was really inspiring and with such attitude and sensitivity, I am very sure that India will be successful in achieving our own sustainable targets. We now request architect Manit Mekar sir to come and address the audience.
and uh, uh, it, it it gives so much for us. Like the kind of the student who said it is the way she said it, the kind of the emotion she projected. Uh, we know now that though we are talking about AGG 2030, I guess these people are going to make sure that we can achieve this quite earlier than that. So, uh, round applause to you guys, people who participated here in this uh, conference as a knowledge partner. I guess uh, it is very important uh, to uh, to start off with uh, Ravindraji, where he has actually uh, in, uh, conceptualized this important aspects of SDG and uh, has created a platform of a conference where all the stakeholders are supposed to come together to discuss and to come up with the kind of action plans through these kind of uh, 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 kind of research engagement where we can achieve this uh, goal of SDG 2030 which our uh, Prime Minister has set up for us. So it was very important that he started this gesture and this is the second conference where uh, we are engaging making sure that it is uh, a very comprehensively addressed as SDG also talks about the same and as uh, Yogini Ma'am has talked about the Vasudeva Kutumakam is kind of inherent policy of uh, us as our cultural uh, inheritance so I guess it is important for us to start looking uh, to start looking inside within us, within our country, within our culture, within our scriptures, rather than looking from the West. I guess we have that ingrained in our DNA. You just have to, you just have to kind of take it out from here and be sensitive. Uh, uh, it is important now to look very comprehensively towards anything. Now we talk about sustainability, we talk about energy conservation, we talk about green energy. And you can see there are theses and antithesis happening immediately. We talk about uh, uh, the, the EVs to kind of take care of the fossil uh, pollutions. But uh, the Switzerland yesterday only has banned EVs, the first country to ban EVs. Because there are lots to be kind of understood comprehensively when you talk about same, using a clean energy at the same time what you are trying to do in terms of uh, life cycle analysis of the kind of batteries. So you cannot, so as a young generation, young researchers, I guess it is very important for us to look very comprehensively and meaningfully that uh, we have been taught to look into any problem in a very specificity of that particular issue. But I guess it is, it is a time when we start looking very comprehensively. There are various stakeholders which are being uh, kind of you address or you intervene or you get off, uh, you affect uh, and at the same time uh, you don't you, you have to start working towards that comprehensively so that the solutions are more sustainable in nature when you say sustainability it has to sustain for a longer time uh, in the realm of economics in the realm of social uh, uh, and it, uh, and cultural so what happens that unless then you create this platform very comprehensively then only the sustainability is going to happen and the research is a very key driver for this and this conference is going to give i guess this is a kind of series of conference uh, conferences uh, the ravindraji has planned so that there are kind of various viewpoints various perspectives which can come onto the table and the implementation also becomes an important key factor which we can generate from here so the research also has to kind of address this implementation at the same time it has to can kind of innovate so it has to be a it has to be a kind of mutual consensus which has to happen when you're doing the research so uh, i guess we are going to be going through this conference where these kind of various perspectives are going to be discussed deliberated and uh, i wish that uh, uh, you all participate all listen to it and you start generating your own innovative ideas from here onwards which can uh, create a, a sustainable future for us. Uh, uh, again, I would want to kind of uh, congratulate and then kind of see the energy from the, not the energy, the cultural rooting which I have seen from your students when the prayer was happening. I guess you all were uh, kind of going down, you had your uh, namaste in your place and I guess that was, that shows that we, we still we still believe in what we are 
and if you start believing i guess this sustainability goals will will come together uh, and in a very less time so with that uh, thank you very much and thank you host for having me here Thank you, sir. Those were really inspiring and enlightening words. Audience, he has talked of energy and all. So let's show some energy in your applause. Come on, give a big round of applause to him. And like he said, it's time for us to think, rethink, learn, unlearn, and relearn about how we can be a participant to this salutogenic theme. Thank you, everyone. We are enlightened with your words, sir, and we shall certainly put your suggestions into actions. We would now like to call upon architect Nilesh Dolakia, sir, chairman of IIM Mumbai chapter, to please address us. Good morning, everyone. And it was a really inspiring good morning for every one of us. I am architect Nilesh Dolakia, chairman of IIM Mumbai, and I would like to. I'm very happy to see all the young students over here and seeing their work when I was coming down the Hazel, I saw the works of all the students and I was very inspired by them and seeing the work which they have created I think we can do a much better job and we can do a much better uh, develop the country in a much better way and have a sustainable thing uh, which we are having a program on so uh, on that basis I think uh, we are looking forward for the two-day event, which is organized by Arvinder Sarnak, sir. And uh, we, I declare the thing open now. And uh, I, I welcome everyone of you to join the program, uh, which is a two-day festival. And we look forward to seeing you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for declaring our conference open. We now would like to invite architect Sanjay Tripathi, who will be taking the session ahead. I also request all the guests to please take off the dais and occupy your seats. Hello, good morning everyone. Uh, I am going to screen a uh, short movie kind of things that is based on environment. So that movie is uh, presented by the, our country partner Medox Kar. And uh, that the director name is Mr. Swinder Singh and uh, he got award from Bharat Gaurav Samman at the House of Lords, <laughs> Parliament of United Kingdom, London. And he is also executive producer and chairman World Environment Forum Medox and the topic is uh, Before I Die. And that is also is uh, an award meaning non fiction short film. So I am going to play that. This movie is about environment. So please watch it carefully because you can take some tips from it and learn how to save the environment, what exactly are the problems that are being faced. Try to find your own solutions and maybe you also could come up with something which could be screened in another conference happening somewhere else.
शुरू हमारी परी तरह की काया सोख कर पीली पड़ गई है जो वायुमंडल हम सब के जीवन का आधार है आखिर क्यों दम घूटू होता जा रहा है अंबर छुपे कचरे के अंबारों से वातावरण में जैसे जहर सा घुल गया है ऐसे में सफाई की पक्की व्यवस्था ऐसे कई सवालों के बीच जन्म हुआ एक सकारात्मक जिद का जिसने एक फिक्रमंद इंसान को समाज के तमाम विरोधों के बावजूद खड़ा रहने की हिम्मत दी जो प्रकृति के हर एक पोशाक पर मानव निर्मित सुराखों को रफू करने में दिन रात संघर्षरत है
पर्यावरण के लिए ये बहुत एक बड़ा मेरे को समझ आ रहा है कि बहुत बड़ा फायदा हो रहा है पर्यावरण के लिए हम लोग कर पा रहे हैं जीवन में ऐसा मेरे को लग रहा है जो ही मांगे कलियां खिलकर बाहर आने लगती हैं शरद ऋतु की तप्त धूप में रंग बिरंगे महकते फूलों की चमकती काया जैसे पास बैठने को मजबूर करती हो जहाँ एक और तितली बमरे फूलों के आसमान में मशहूर है वहीं दूसरी ओर सैकड़ों मील की दूरी तय कर आने वाले दुर्गम पक्षी फूलों के इर्द गिर्द डेरा लगा लेते हैं नीले रंग के फूलों पर नीले चिड़िया का मंडराना नजर को ठहरने पर विवश करता है ये पक्षी फूलों के किले रहने तक साथ रहते हैं फिर अनजाने सफर पर पलायन कर जाते हैं लोगों के दिमाग में ये रहता है आज दस लोगों ने मेरे से सवाल भी किया कि इससे आपको क्या मिलता है पैसा कहां से आता है? मैंने पूरे जीवन में कभी भी किसी से एक भी पैसा दिल टूटे किसी भी काम के लिए सरकार से किसी संस्था से किसी व्यक्ति से किसी ने मेरे को पुरस्कृत किया वो मैं गलत बात लास्ट ईयर मेरे को हमारे हाईकोर्ट ने एक लाख एक हजार रुपया प्लस एक पुरस्कार था ग्रीन मैन के अलावा कुछ नहीं तो ये केवल खुशी के लिए किया जाता है ये छोटा होता है जरा ना ये और नहीं कोई काम करता से सारे पैसा नहीं बन रहे तो वाले ही होता ये बस ये जो काम नहीं करता से ये जो काम तो लगा रहे बस लोगों के सामाजिक बहिष्कार और थे जाति आधार पे लेकिन मेरा व्यक्ति के आधार पे घोषित सामाजिक बहिष्कार हुआ पूरे एरिए में मुझे कोई राम राम नहीं करता था कोई मेरे साथ बोलता चलता नहीं था इवन मेरा अपना परिवार भी कि मैं संयुक्त परिवार से हूँ कम्बाइंड फैमिली से हूँ लेकिन परिवार को बड़ी नाराजगी थी इस काम से कि मैंने लोगों की गंदगी हटवा दी लोगों के गोबर के ढेर हटवा दिए हम विरोध इसलिए करते थे कि हमारे यहाँ सामान पड़ा था जैसे लकड़ी पड़ी थी टूड़ी पड़ी थी रूढ़ी पड़ी थी उसके लिए हमारे पास घर में रखने के लिए कोई जगह नहीं तो जब ये डॉक्टर साहब ने उठवाया तो हमारे को बहुत बुरा लगा रहा हम ये सामान कहाँ रखेंगे तो ये तो अपनी दुकानदारी चलाएंगे ये फूल पौधे लगा के फूल बेचेंगे अपने फायदे के लिए कर रहे हैं ये सब कुछ जहाँ भी जाते थे लोग कहते थे तेरे भाई ने हमें बर्बाद कर दिया तो मैं बड़ी बहन दुख तो लगता ही है हमें इतनी मुश्किलें आ गई कि हमें यहाँ रहना भी मुश्किल हो गया कोई हमारे से बात करने के लिए तैयार नहीं था कोई हमारे को राम राम करने के सारे के सारे दुश्मन हो गए लड़ाई झगड़े बहुत बुरा हाल हो गया लोगों ने ऐसे बाजार में जाते कोई इधर से गाली देता कोई इधर से हम चुप करके सुनकर आगे चले जाते अब हमारे को धीरे धीरे महसूस हुआ सर ये तो समाज सेवा कर रहे हैं ये गाँव के लिए अच्छा है समाज के लिए अच्छा है इसलिए हम भी डॉक्टर साहब के साथ हो गया हम तन मन धन से इनके साथ है डॉक्टर राम जी जैमल ने एक अभियान चलाया था गंदगी हटाओ और फूल पौधे लगाओ उस अभियान के जरिए हमने ये अपने गांव में ये गंदगी उठा के हमने पौधे लगाए हैं फूल लगाए हैं ये हमारा आने वाला जो पर्यावरण है हमारी आगे जनरेशन है हमारी जो नई पीढ़ी है उनके स्वास्थ्य के लिए ये बहुत ही अच्छा है बचपन से मेरा भाई समाज सेवा करता है और अब भी जितना भी टाइम हो समाज सेवा करता है जितना भी उसके पास टाइम हो थोड़ा बहुत तो गीत संगीत में लगाता है समझाने में वो नहीं समझे 
उन्होंने फिर डॉक्टर साहब से कुछ कहा नहीं बोलो उसकी टक्का मुक्की की इतने में मैंने भी बचाव किया उन्होंने फिर मेरे को लाठी मारी तो मैं पाँच दिन मैं और मेरा भांजा भी एडमिट रहे मैं जुनूनी था ऐसे जुनून हमें पाल ले अदरवाइज हमारा देश यही खड़ा रहेगा और हम यही कहते रहेंगे कि इस देश में कुछ नहीं ऐसा करना होगा ऐसा हमें होना होगा और अगर हम नहीं हो सकते तो अपने बच्चे भी नहीं हमेशा के समाज से बातें लगे रहेंगे आप जैसे इतना बिल्कुल ध्यान नहीं करते मैं कहना रोटी खा के जाया करो कहना ना बस सेवा तो लगे रहेंगे इस करके इन्हों भी अलसर हो गया काम तो बहुत अच्छा है पर आप सेहत जरूरी ध्यान देना जरूरी है मैंने कई बार भी इन्हों बोला भी एक और नहीं तो एक रसोई तो बना लो कि लोग इन्हें आते जाते नहीं बड़े वे लोग आते नहीं फिर भी परेशानी आती आप तो कोई गल नहीं चल भी चल ही जाता है जो तो कोई आता है तो थोड़ी जी दिक्कत आती है रसोई तो जरूर ही बना लो और कुछ नहीं था मेरी पत्नी ने मेरे को जीवन में एक ही चीज मांगी कि डॉक्टर रसोई बना और मैं मतलब सारे जीवन में उसको बेचारी को रसोई बना के दे सका जब हम पौध निकालना लगभग नौ बजे शुरू करते हैं उससे पहले पहले हमें ये चिट्ठी पहुंचा है जिसमें ये मेंशन हो कि उन्हें कितने पौधे चाहिए क्योंकि ये गिनती हमारी जो है हर रोज कभी लाखों में होती है कभी करोड़ों में भी होती है तो हमें शाम को अंदाजा हो जाए कि हमें कितने पौधे उखाड़ दें और दूसरा हमें दोनों ही तरफ से सुबह सुविधा रहती है कि जब आपकी चिट्ठी पहुंची हम उस पर नंबर डाल देते हैं और उस नंबर के हिसाब से हम सुबह उनको पौधे देते हैं उनके लिए भी आसान है हमारे लिए भी आसान है मैंने देखा कि जैसे ही फोन खिले तो लोगों ने हॉर्न बजा बजा के सड़क के किनारे मेरे को राम राम करनी शुरू की जैसे ही गंदगी के ढेर फूलों में बदले विरोधियों के मन भी बदलने शुरू हो गए सामने आने पर रोक कर कोसने वाले लोग सर झुकाकर जय हिंद बोलने लगे बदलाव के इस विस्फोट ने गलत फहमियों के बादल हमेशा के लिए छाट दिए ये बदलाव आने में ज्यादा समय भी नहीं लगा बहुत कम समय में बदलाव आ गया जैसे ही फूल लगाए गए और खिले उसमें चार महीने का समय लगा चार महीनों में लोगों की मेंटेलिटी बदल गई और आज भी जिन लोगों ने मेरा सामाजिक बहिष्कार करवाने का प्रयास किया था वो समाज में अलग था सारा समाज एकदम से बदल गया तो जब वहाँ फूल खिल के बढ़िया बाहर आने लगी तो डॉक्टर साहब उसी में खुरका लेके लगा रहे थे, थे। लोगों ने उसको मान लिया भी बंदे ने काम बढ़िया किया तो लोगों को बढ़िया लगने लगा हम ये दूर से देख के हमारे को भी बढ़िया लगने लगा कि बंदे ने काम करके दिखाया तो अपने को भी इसकी मदद करनी चाहिए की बहुत पहले साल बांटने के लिए जब 10 साल पहले हमने लगाई तो लगभग बीस हजार के आसपास मैंने पौधे लगाए थे और पहले साल बीस हजार पौधे बटे नहीं थे उसमें से भी कुछ पौधे बच गए लेकिन प्रति वर्ष वो बढ़ता चला गया और पिछले साल तो उसको करोड़ों में भी नहीं गिना जा सकता इतना तीन गांवों में हमने पौध लगाई लोगों के बागों का हमने बहुत अच्छी तरह से बाखूबी प्रयोग किया और जो एक हम एरिया थोड़ा सा डेवलप करने की सोच रहे थे आज वो पूरे एरिए अलग अलग प्रांतों के स्कूल्स कॉलेजेस गुरुद्वारे जेलें मंदिर मस्जिद गौशालाएं जहां भी आप नजर मारते हैं एकदम नजारा बदल गया है मैं सिरसा का रहने वाला हूँ सिरसा जेल में मेरे को ये बीस साल की सजा ही नाम सुख देना ही मेरा और ये पोतों की सेवा करते ही पोतों में सेवा करते हमारे को शांति मिलती है और भी भाई बंदी भाई है जी वो भी साथ में लगते हैं और जितने जो छूट के गए जी वो भी जाके बाहर स्कूलों में पौधे लगा रहे जी अपने कब्रस्तानों में और डॉक्टर राम जी आते हैं जी और हमारे को मान लो जी पौधे भेजते जी लगाते जी और इनकी सेवा के लिए बता के जाते हैं जी ऐसे करो ऐसे करो जी इज मेकिंग द अर्थ अ ब्यूटीफुल प्लेस दुनिया को इतना खूबसूरत हो बना रहे सबको दे रहे हैं फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट दे रहे हैं इतनी बड़ी सेवा वो कर रहे हैं हमने भी उनसे प्लांट्स लेके जगह जगह पे लगाए हैं दी अर्थ लुक्स सो मच बेटर इट लुक्स इट्स मेड अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल चेंज इन दिस वर्ल्ड 
इस बच्ची की कदर की देखिए मैं ये चाहता हूं कि जब मैं इस दुनिया से जाऊं तो मेरे गांव में मोर और उस रात को मोर जरूर होते हैं लेकिन उसके लिए बहुत बड़े प्रयासों की जरूरत है क्योंकि मोर संवेदनशील है उसके लिए टोटल ऑर्गेनिक होना चाहिए और टोटल ऑर्गेनिक करने में मेरा जीवन कामयाब होता है या नहीं होता है ये भविष्य की गर्म में है लेकिन उसके लिए दोस्त प्रयास करते हैं और मैं उम्मीद करता हूं कि यह क्षेत्र ऑर्गेनिक हो जाएगा और जब मैं मालिक के पास जाऊंगा तो मेरे गाँव में मोर होंगे Okay. 
or the symbolic relic from one temple or one shrine to the new. And in this process, starting for, I would say, five years prior to, to the rebuilding, the uh, carpenters prepare or the forest, uh, they cut the trees, they process it and prepare for lumber and bring it to the site uh, all in a very traditional way and to uh, begin the construction. And it's recorded uh, in medieval times and ancient times in paintings like this. And here's a ceremony to cut the tree and, and try to make a lumber from it. A very traditional. And this is what, ha what happens today. The pilgrimage of the people who believe in uh, this uh, Shinto uh, goes, uh, comes from all over Japan to participate in this ceremony to uh, erect the new temple. In fact, I was there, I would say, about seven years ago. And they build it day and night. And finally, the imperial uh, court and the shrine priests uh, climb up this hill where the shrine is located, and the emperor transfers the treasure or the relic to the new uh, shrine, newly built shrine. And at that point, that new shrine becomes the official location of the shrine, and the old it gets demolished. And all the tree, all the lumbers would be brought to local uh, shrines all over Japan because these are holy uh, uh, construction materials. So it's completely uh, recycled. And so the imperial family is sustainable. The society is sustainable. And the idea of this construction is sustainable because every 20 years, let's say a six-year-old comes to become an apprentice watching how this is built. 20 years later, he's the working carpenter at age 26. And 20 years later, at 46, he will be the master builder, which will control the construction. So it's all in the head. It's written. Experience is there every 20 years. And for 1,500 years or longer, this was uh, continuously rebuilt in exact same uh, design, exact same construction, same material. Even the the wood, the the lumber uh, was cut from the same mountain. And so Japan, in the form, uh, as the uh, prelude, I would say, has a solution to sus sustainable development goals. Now, as an architect, we and, and some of you are architects in the audience. We, in this context, we design sustainable and resilient buildings and environments uh, for the past, I would say, 30, 40 years uh, due to the problem that the challenges of global warming. But they build, we build in steel, in concrete, perhaps hybrid, to be innovative for sustainable uh, net zero uh, carbon uh, uh, design and construction. But then when we think about it, and I'm sure you're all aware that every time we do something, we emit CO2. In construction, from the day that you extract the raw materials to transporting to the factory, to manufacture the, the building parts, Again, transporting to the site, erecting the building, and when it's built, to run the building, to maintain the building. And later on, as the building gets old, you must demolish and more carbon. It's hauled away, much more carbon. And then landfill, all this produces carbon emission. And in this footprint, we see on top, India, quite a big uh, global carbon footprint. And of course, China and the United States are huge. And Japan and Russia, 
while Japan is as, as, as large as India, in a sense. Nothing to be proud of. So the challenge for the United Nations SDG, we have to tackle 17 goals that relates to global warming, globalization, population problems, urbanization, water shortage, world food shortage, energy, and of course aging society, and much more. In this context, our conference here is trying to propose a solution, not just to kind of uh, echo or just repeat the fact that we must do. How are we going to do it? Well, today, my proposal is water. Water in a subcritical water stage. It's an environmental friendly recycling for the planet Earth. So that is the image of our planet, our society, our cities, and waste, waste, waste. We are producing waste, which we were not, you know, maybe 100, 200, 300 years ago. Everything is just throw it away and don't look back. The garbage collectors will do the job. So we're it's swallowing up our global environment. And I'd like to, you to watch this movie for nine minutes. This will probably tell you much about what I am trying to tell you today, what I'm, the message I'm trying to relate to you today. So please watch this carefully. This is a waste disposal plant in Mikasa City of Hokkaido Prefecture. The facility, which handles medical waste, processes around one ton of waste per day, gathered from medical institutions in and around the city. These boxes contain infectious wastes divided into liquids, solids, and hazardous substances which have been checked by the hospitals. They contain infectious diseases. They mustn't spread, so we can't open the boxes. Other wastes include used syringes, empty intravenous bags, and paper diapers. Medical waste is difficult to treat because of contamination with infectious agents. This facility has innovative equipment for treating everything in one single step, without incineration. This is the equipment. It is known as subcritical water processing equipment. It is capable of decomposing all kinds of organic matter, from paper to vinyl, plastic, kitchen garbage, and even wastewater sludge. First, we'll look at plastic boxes. Everything will be pulverized inside the machine, so even boxes of this size may be thrown in cold. These are vinyl containers. Finally, these are used paper and cloth diapers. There is no need to sort the waste according to time. Everything is processed at once. Then, an hour later, The discharge hatch is open, and decomposed waste pours out as a dirt-like substance. There is no pungent smell typical of waste, but it has a pleasant smell, like kind of tomato soy sauce. Is this soil? No, it's oil cake. 
So further treatment can even make it flammable. The waste has been completely decomposed. Inorganic matter, such as silicon and metal parts, cannot be decomposed, but they can easily be removed later. It depends on the type of waste, but here, the volume has been reduced to around one-third of what it originally was. It has been sterilized and made harmless, so there is no problem whatsoever in burying it as it is. So how is the waste decomposed? The secret lies in the subcritical water. It refers to water in a particular state. Water in one atmosphere boils and vaporizes at 100 degrees Celsius. But raising the air pressure in an enclosed space prevents it from boiling when the temperature exceeds 100 degrees Celsius. This is because the water molecules are prevented from evaporating freely by the pressure exerted on it by the air. Continuing raising the temperature and pressure in this state takes the temperature up to 200 degrees Celsius at 20 atmospheres, at which point the water turns into a vapor-like state. This is subcritical water. It is a state in which the water molecules that have been pressed together reach their limit and begin to separate and bounce around violently inside the chamber. In this state, other molecules that enter the water are immediately broken down. The subcritical water processing equipment makes use of this property of subcritical water. After the waste has been thrown in, Steam is blown into the tank to raise its temperature and pressure, generating subcritical water. Materials such as paper, plastic, vinyl, and wood chips are all organic matter formed by chains of carbon. These chains are broken into smaller molecules of organic matter by the subcritical water. This renders them harmless before being removed from the discharge hatch. The subcritical water processing equipment is able to decompose vegetable waste, such as onion skin, the discarded internal organs of scallops, kitchen garbage, waste paper, plastics, sawdust, wastewater sludge, clothes, and other such wastes. It can break down anything made of organic matter. The process basically requires only water making it very safe. It also differs from incineration and in that there is no danger of air pollution or discharge dioxins. Everything used to be incinerated before deployment of this equipment. So there used to be a huge smokestack outside the building, which has not been replaced with a small chimney that only discharges steam. Fuel costs are low compared to incineration. It also doesn't give off odors or smoke. In that sense, it's environmentally friendly. Apart from the subcritical water processing equipment, there is a variety of equipment for processing other materials. There is the odor rejector and a pressure separator for treating wastewater and sludge. And using these in combination with an activated sludge membrane separator allows the treatment of a variety of industrial wastes. The decomposed waste is pure organic matter. It can also be used as high quality organic fertilizer. Moreover, changing the pressure inside the equipment can turn the discharge matter into any form, from powder to liquid fertilizer. High quality fertilizer can be made from any kind of waste, enabling profits to be made from selling it. There is a farmer who has actually been using this fertilizer. Mr. Sakuta, who has been involved in organic farming for many years and is widely known for his achievements, has been using this fertilizer since six years ago. 
This fertilizer was wastewater sludge before it was decomposed. <laughs> Thorough safety tests were apparently carried out by customers. They carried out analyses, for example, to test for heavy metals. I was worried too, but they found nothing wrong with it. Mr. Sakuta Chu personally had the fertilizer examined by a food analyzer in Tokyo, so its safety is guaranteed. Not only that, this fertilizer contains amino acids, which he has found boosts harvests. I've been carrying out research in the compost, not chemical fertilizers, for 20 years. But the compost I just scattered over the ground was developed recently. It's somewhat of a shock that it's turned out to be better than the compost that I've made. The subcritical water processing equipment is set to become the new answer to a recycling society. And the sky is the limit for its potential. So, this is the um, outline or, or introduction of the, the system. And you saw this uh, uh, unit. This is about 20 years old. It's been running uh, continuously. And so, uh, this unit uh, that is manufactured uh, have, is, is, is very durable and can process the waste of uh, a city as, as, as large as a, 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 a million, pe million people, uh, depending on how many units you install in, uh, in the municipalities. The objective of this uh, campaign is really to clean the earth for the next generation uh, of children. So when we project that the population, you know, in 2050 is going to be over 10 billion, it's our duty to really uh, have a, a solution that uh, can, can provide for the future generation. And we're here to discuss this subcritical water recycling system. So we call it Allen because in Japan, in Japanese, uh, subcritical water is called Arinkai. So it's a generic term and a brand name for the platform to recycle the organic material. And its goal is to achieve the high level application of the organic material. And you saw in the movie here just now that the, the waste is reduced to 70% of the original volume in a soil-like residue which is highly organic, it sterilizes the content. So the medical waste will not be uh, a poisonous. And you can recycle it into agricultural fertilizer, or you can, you can ferment, use this for a fermenter for biogas generation, generating, uh, producing methane gas from uh, this uh, fermentation process. And so subcritical water is the state of this gaseous state uh, of water at 200 degrees centigrade and with 20 pressure. The process is very, very clear. That's proposed by our scientist Toshikatsu Suzuki. First, we go through the process of creating the residue in the alum process. In phase two, we combine it with biogas production, biogas uh, generation uh, plant. It produces electric electricity as, uh, and, and it can be stored in a battery form. And uh, in Japan, you can sell the electricity. I, I, I'm sure in other countries you can sell the, the electricity you generate it, like the solar energy and so on. And this also can be done. And the residue at the end of the, the whole process can still be used as an organic fertilizer, which can be sold. Or let's say in a, in a, a low-income community, that can be provided for the, the residents uh, in the community for uh, producing food for their local 
uh, for their own family and so on. So it's a community development uh, solution as well too. The kind of uh, materials that you can recycle are medical waste, the household garbage, food processing waste, plastic. So the, the problem with the plastic bottles in the ocean can be uh, solved by this process. The clothing and paper, paper uh, for paper manufacturing plant, they produce lots of uh, industrial waste water. So this would be a solution for a, a, a large plant like the paper producing plant. Uh, sewage sludge can also be used to make the organic fertilizer as well too. So we can use this alloy to break down any organic materials to a low molecular and it is non-poisonous, non-toxic. And it doesn't smell. So it's good for a uh, cattle farm as well too because they, they produce so much cow dungs and so on. The second phase, that will significantly improve productivity of the biogas uh, uh, material, electrical generation. It increases uh, uh, the production and it reduces the time of the fermenting process uh, as well too. And so when the high performance generators uh, there, the inner city urban low price generator uh, can be uh, used in the urban situation. The LM makes possible the reuse of this juice that we were talking about, digestive juice, in a sewage, in a sewage treatment uh, possible. Uh, generally, this material used to generate biogas ends up in a industrial waste. Uh, and it takes a large amount of money to transport and get rid of the waste. I don't know about other countries, but in Japan it is a nuisance uh, for the producers of, uh, of these uh, um, uh, uh, plants and, uh, and, and, and also municipalities. So with this uh, pressurized flotation device, which is a device to separate the organic residue uh, used for agricultural application and the water to make recycling the industrial waste possible. As a result, this production capability of biogas generator is greatly improved by this process of having this flotation device. And because you use, we use this for organic farming, the, the result of, let's say this is uh, uh, a melon, uh, typically melon grown with chemical fertilizer rots and, uh, and fungus develop. But for uh, the fertilizer, uh, using Allen fertilizer, it is very organic and the agricultural products are very healthy. And so we use the Allen box to, to go through the process of, of sort of disintegrating the all kinds of waste into uh, uh, residue, which can be used as a methane fermentator and also for, uh, for CO2 extracted, can be used for uh, greenhouses and so on, and the methane gas generator is used to create electricity. And the byproduct is, can be used for agricultural uh, fertilizer. So basically, when you diagram it, that's how this is going to look like. From the left, the organic farming uh, material uh, with the technology, uh, we put it into the uh, to the uh, Allen device. Uh, in the fermentator, is uh, the the residues put in the fermentator. The the uh, the gas is generated from it. The CO two is uh, extracted so that the 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 methane gas is much more pure and to be transported through gas holder to the generator to create electricity. So this is a typical uh, system that requires perhaps 3,000 square meters. And the cost of, I would say, depending on the tonnage, let's say 10 ton unit will be about 15 
a million US dollars. Um, this is what it looks like, the flow. The primary residue looks like this. The methane gas fermentator, uh, the, the residue is put into the fermentator to generate the gas. And uh, it goes through the digestive uh, juice to separate it and uh, the uh, residue uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, brought uh, out that can be sold uh, to the farmers for organic cultivation. So when you diagram it, this is what it may look like. The fermentation tank and the biogas and electric generation plant. Typically, typically, typically 3,000 square meters. So, the innovation of basic design concept is the way it was, is the garbage is something to be carried away, don't look back. And electricity is something to be provided with. But with this Allen system, no need to take away the waste, you can use it. And the self-sufficient electric generation can be achieved. So for the business model, a big paradigm shift. You can use it, you can install it in the resort development. This can be an alternative to waste processing incinerator. No burning, no dioxin. New business model for industrial waste entrepreneur specializes in industrial waste. You can propose this in the new cities, an urban planning pro a proposal. And like I said, the sludge <coughs> produced in the paper manufacturing process, which is a nuisance, can be resolved by this uh, Allen system. In the dairy industry, the same. In the, the shellfish, fish, food processing, the same. <coughs> and for the sewage system, when you get the sludge that can be used, just imagine, can be used, turn into organic fertilizer. And you can make it into different sizes, and, and you can have a housing a development. A developer can combine several housing units together and, 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 and provide this one unit, collect the garbage very close to the locality to create electric uh, uh, energy through methane gas uh, um, generation. And this could be the, 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 the money the, 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 the profit made from electric generation can be brought back to uh, the co uh, cooperative, the, uh, the residents. So it, it is returning. <coughs> and it can be uh, put into a smaller unit, like one ton unit, or each unit. <coughs> and for uh, this dairy uh, 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 farm uh, situation as well, too. Our uh, Professor Toshikatsu Suzuki has all these uh, patents related to this Allen process. And uh, you saw that 18, 20 year old unit, but now we're uh, uh, redesigning into using much more durable material, a uh, high specification, and to be provided uh, globally. And so like Apple, you know, no trash. This is a, a, an idea Allenism spreads throughout the world. We will not dispose waste. We will love waste. We will work to establish a self-sufficient energy system to promote organic farming for the well-being and health, healthy growth of the children. And we will create all these energy, renewable energy, from the waste produced by the society. So it's a total cycle, like the Sustainable Society of Japan. And this is a national anthem of Japan that I hope your world goes on. This is the, 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 one of the phrases for thousands of years until pebbles merge into one giant rock and cover with moss. Like this. And this exists in Japan. And here, moss and plants merge with the stone for eternal prosperity. So with water and with waste, the eternal prosperity can be achieved along with other solutions that is produced in this conference. So thank you so much and you can contact me at information at tlifeelab.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
I request volunteers to please put up the dais also. I request all the audience to please be seated. We are expecting our MLA to be here in any moment.
we are going to uh, introduce that our second speaker. She is connecting from uh, London, and uh, that is, uh, the time is uh, very early. Like uh, there is uh, 5:30 a.m. So she is uh, joining in between. Okay. Hello, all of you, ma'am. Are you there? Yes, I am. So, Olofin is a Olofin Taigo is from UN Research Scholar, and uh, he is also a part of uh, United Nations London Unit, and uh, she is doing uh, doctoral research in planner. And uh, his topic is sustainable cities and communities. So she is going to present his research. So. Make a big clap of round for her. Okay, Mr. Man. I think your camera is uh, off. Can you please turn on? Yeah, now it's visible. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, my name is Olafi Taigo and uh, I'm a doctoral researcher at University College London. I'm also the co-chair for the UN Habitat Planners for Climate Action. Um, I also work as a chair for the Commonwealth Association of Planners, the Young Planners Network, and a member of the steering committee for the Commonwealth Youth for Sustainable Urbanization. Um, I'm not sure what you can see um, at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's actually a pleasure and a delight to be able to join you here today um, from England. And um, it's actually, I've listened to uh, the Professor Meritus from Japan, and it's been an interesting uh, presentation. It's very enlightening. Um, I won't take your time too much. My presentation is centered around the localizing the SDG level, uh, in particular the target three, which is around inclusive and sustainable organization. Uh, just as a way of introduction, uh, population growth and commonwealth and economic opportunities have really propelled cities and urban areas to become the principal habitat. Uh, more than 60% of the world's population is predicted will be living in cities by 2030. And by 2050, it is anticipated that an extra 2.5 billion people will be living in towns and cities. Uh, nearly 50% of these 2.5 billion extra people uh, would be within the Commonwealth uh, countries. These are over 56 countries in the world. And uh, it is also expected that the, of all these uh, young people will be severely affected um, as well because there would then be an increase in a younger population. Uh, also, 65% of the 169 targets of the sustainable development are linked to territorial and urban development. So, therefore, achieving the well being of people 
the well-being of communities and environment in cities and urban area is very critical now more than ever before. Um, however, there are challenges within the cities. There are, there are pre-existing challenges. Cities and urban areas are plagued with high level of poverty. They're plagued with high level of unemployment and underemployment at different levels. Uh, weak and insufficient critical basic infrastructure on various spatial levels, as well as uh, social economic challenges and the pandemic um, as well. According to the forecast based on scientific evidence, the adverse implication of climate change crisis will be devastating on urban residents, uh, particularly the poorest, the most marginalized, and the most vulnerable. So these are children, women, uh, persons with disability, and older people, uh, would be disproportionately affected um, by this uh, climate crisis that we'll be experiencing. Um, and it may also render hundreds and millions of urban residents increasingly vulnerable to floods, to landslides, to extreme weather conditions, and other disasters. Uh, the 2021 report on sustainable development goals also highlighted that the crisis caused by COVID-19 threatens the decades of progress that has been made in development and further disrupting the progress on sustainable development goals. And we know that cities uh, were the epicenter of uh, COVID-19 and suffered significantly. And uh, it's interesting because there is a conversation of are we post-pandemic or are we pandemic? Uh, are we still in the pandemic? And in some areas, in some cities across the world, they are still experiencing the pandemic. So there they are the pandemic implications and the post-pandemic implications as well as the economic challenges and uh, given all these challenges all together we then have to consider how uh, the sustainable development goals will be implemented uh, and i'll say the first question is what is the sustainable development goals what are the sustainable development goals the sustainable development goals are the goals that have been set as a transitioning process from the millennium development goals and they are really the, the focus on how to create more sustainable environment, more sustainable environment, with a focus on people uh, in particular. This was an a target that over the 169 targets that have been set would be achieved by 2030. Uh, among the goals, we have goal 11, which is to make cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Uh, among these Within these goals, there are targets, over five targets, and the targets, part of the targets range from creating adequate, safe, and affordable housing, to sustainable and accessible transport system, to positive economic, social, and environmental links between the urban, the peri-urban, the rural areas, uh, by strengthening national and regional development planning. Uh, I, in particular, would focus on SDG 11 target 3, which is that by 2030, we should enhance inclusive and sustainable organization and capacity for participatory and capacity for participatory integrated and sustainable human settlements planning and management in all countries. So basically, what it's saying is that to ensure that there is inclusive that we are able to achieve inclusive and sustainable organization and capacity for, for participatory integrated and sustainable human sentiment that everyone is involved in the process of creating the human sentiment their environment that no one is left out there should be active community participation in in the work um, today i'm going to give some examples of how within the commonwealth uh, this SDG are being localized in cities among professions and, and bringing, part, particularly from a practice uh, perspective, uh, there are different initiatives within the Commonwealth and outside of the Commonwealth towards addressing and localizing an SDG level. Uh, but in particular, I would draw attention to the Commonwealth Sustainable Cities Initiative 
which is an interdisciplinary partnership of the Commonwealth Association of Planners, the Commonwealth Local Government Forum, the Association of Commonwealth Universities, the Commonwealth Engineers Council, the Government of Rwanda, in partnership with the Commonwealth Secretariat and the Prince's Foundation. And the goal of the initiative is to address rapid organization among Commonwealth cities. As part of the initiative, um, the, there was an extensive consultation process drawing on the experiences and expertise of contributors from all regions of the Commonwealth and uh, to create a call to action. Uh, the survey was carried out on beauty environment professions and what they need. Uh, uh, in response to this consultative process, the call to action was launched. And the purpose of the call to action is it seeks to locate sustainable organization within the global Commonwealth framework and also emphasizing a greater focus on sustainable organization to ensure that people and improving the quality of life for all remain central to the work of the Commonwealth. And uh, when I refer to Commonwealth, not just not the Commonwealth as an entity, but also to the Commonwealth cities and the Commonwealth countries. It also advocates for a Commonwealth partnership leveraging intergovernmental, associated and accredited Commonwealth organizations with dedicated resources to support sustainable organization that is anchored in the core values of the Commonwealth. A part of the core values of the Commonwealth are a greater focus um, on, on Commonwealth policies and uh, specifically the, the call to action identified areas in which this, uh, the call to action in which this assistance, this partnership, this collaboration and this intergovernmental, let me do this intergovernmental opportunities and resources available within the Commonwealth uh, can be utilized. And part of the recommendation is a greater focus on enabling sustainable organization and Commonwealth policy making. It's also a Commonwealth, to establish a Commonwealth dialogue uh, to define and implement a new way of working across different respective uh, networks towards multi-level governance and sustainable organization. Uh, commitment by member states to uh, the call to action called for commitment by member states to a commonwealth initiative of practical actions to support sustainable cities and human settlement across the commonwealth. And uh, in response to the call to action, um, uh, a young architect from Cameroon recommended the establishment of a similar initiative for engaging young professionals to also be actively involved in this dialogue in implementing practical action towards sustainable organization. Uh, this working with the Commonwealth Secretariat, this then led to the establishment of the Commonwealth Youth for Sustainable Organization. And the Commonwealth Youth for Sustainable Organization consists of the young mayors, uh, part of a member of the steering committee is a young mayor from Belize, with, with one of the youngest mayors, 23 years, one of the youngest mayors in the Commonwealth. Uh, we have engineers actively represented. We also have planners, we have architects, we have representatives from local governments in terms of administration also actively represented and the Commonwealth Secretariat as well as the Princess Foundation. Uh, the, the goal is to be able to improve the capacity of young people to ensure that there is an, an aspect of young people, the impact of young people is considered in policies, in the Commonwealth policies, in sustainable, towards achieving sustainable organization. And it's also drawing on the resources that the young professionals have in achieving sustainable organization as well as intergenerational approach to the SDG level and the SDGs in general are called for an integrated approach, a, a collective, collaborative, active participatory approach towards achieving these goals and this is what this network is set to achieve. The network was launched in Kigali at the Commonwealth Head of Government and Look, Head of Government and Government um, and government ministers meeting in June this year, mid-year this year. Uh, and uh, working groups have been established 
one of the working groups is a Commonwealth Sustainable Energy Transition Group, which is focused on how to achieve a sustainable energy transition in a rapid uh, way as well. And uh, I will then introduce the Rapid Planning Toolkit, which is a toolkit that is uh, created by the, the Princess Foundation in particular. And the aim of the toolkit is basically, uh, it's a simple and practical toolkit. It's, a, it's to ensure that uh, city mayors, city leaders, and key departments are assisted in creating robust and implementable legal plans. Uh, the toolkit advocates for built environment professionals to collaborate with local and national government, technical specialists, and local communities uh, towards creating sustainable cities. There are four key steps of the toolkit, and uh, this toolkit has been uh, tried, tried in, uh, in different countries in over 11 cities. They are being tested at the moment as well from Bangladesh to India to New Zealand to Ghana to Syria Leone. Uh, and I would give an example of uh, Bo in Syria Leone. Bo, this, the toolkit was tested in Bo, and Bo is a secondary city in Syria Leone with a with population expected to increase to 540,000 by 2040 from 270,000 in 2015. Uh, the city is surrounded by wetlands, but due to rapid urbanization, the lack of strategic plans, this world, these wetlands have actually been used on, and so the, the challenge remains. It also doesn't have uh, planners within the city council, so the challenge remains how do we uh, protect our city, how do we uh, ensure that we create sustainable neighborhoods and sustainable environments. And uh, using the toolkit, the key step one of the toolkit is to be able to create a city growth charter, which includes creating, preparing a charter workshop to organizing a charter workshop to then consulting publicly on the charter that has been created with the community. Uh, in Rome, there was, they then identified the whole city council um, work together with their local mm -hmm. residents with local cool, communities, eh? with chiefs oh, yeah. within the community to identify areas to work on. Ma'am, am I audible? And, yes. Ma'am, sorry to interrupt you. Can, can we have at least five to ten minutes? We have our chief guest here. Okay. Can we begin after five, five to ten minutes? Okay. Um, yes. that we have among us MLAs of Kandavili East, Sri Abdulji with us. I request architect Ravindra sir and Deedat sir to please escort him to the stage for his presentation. Audience, please a big round of applause. I now request Sri Atulji to come up and say a few words.
a catalyst vision towards United Nations Sustainable Development. ये कॉन्फ्रेंस में उपस्थित ठाकुर कॉलेज ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर के प्रिंसिपल धीरज सल्लोत्रा जी ये इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस जिन्होंने आयोजित किया है ऐसे रविंद्र सरनाइक जी और उपस्थित सभी एकेडमिशियन स्टूडेंट एंड डिफरेंट फील्ड्स से आए हुए सभी लोग सबसे पहले तो मैं सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट के इंफ्रास्ट्रक्शन के लिए इस प्रकार की अंतर्राष्ट्रीय कॉन्फ्रेंस आयोजित किया इसके लिए मैं सरनाइक जी को भी और ठाकुर कॉलेज ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर को भी बहुत बहुत बधाई देना चाहता हूँ उनका अभिनंदन करना चाहता हूँ वैसे तो मैं सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट के ऊपर बहुत कुछ बोल सकता हूँ लेकिन स्टेज पर आने के पहले ही ये बताया गया है कि इंटरप्शन सिर्फ पाँच या दस मिनट के लिए है और हम सब टीवी देखते ही है तो ऐड ज़्यादा चलेगी तो अपन चैनल बदल देते हैं और इसके लिए ज़्यादा चलेगा तो आप स्विच ऑन कर सकते हैं इसके लिए मैं कोई ज्यादा भाषण नहीं करूंगा लेकिन सही में सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट ये आज इस देश के सामने नहीं तो दुनिया के सामने ये एक अहम मुद्दा है और सही में तो पूरे प्लेनेट का ये सर्वाइवल का मुद्दा है परसों ही मैंने व्हाट्सएप पे एक क्लिप देखी कि ऐसे कोई कॉन्फ्रेंस की ऐड के हेतु बहुत बढ़िया उन्होंने बनाया था इंटरनेशनल यानी कोई अन्य देश का कॉन्फ्रेंस था वो बैठे थे और वहां से अचानक डायनासोर आ गया और डायनासोर ने बोला कि मैं तो खत्म हो गया अभी आप आपका सोचो मैं तो एक्सटिंक्ट हो गया लेकिन आप क्या आपका फ्यूचर क्या है ये आपके हाथ में है और इसके लिए सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट हम सबको अपने प्लेनेट के लिए अपने फ्यूचर के लिए नेक्स्ट जनरेशन के लिए ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है और ये भी बात सही है कि सल्लोत्रा जी से जैसे एकेडमिक्स या सरनाइक जैसे एक्टिविस्ट ये उसके ऊपर कितना भी मेहनत करे मेजर रोल तो जो पावर में है उनका ही रहता है बिकॉज वी आर द पॉलिसी मेकर्स इफ वी फेल टू फ्रेम एनी पॉलिसी विच विल बूस्ट द सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट देन यू कैन डू एनीथिंग यू आर हेल्पलेस सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट करते समय उसकी पॉलिसी बनाते समय उसके बारे में जो भी आपको एज ए एकेडमिशियन एज अ एक्टिविस्ट सजेशन करने हैं वो करते समय मेरे को इतना ही लगता है एज अ पॉलिटिशियन कि ये सजेशन प्रैक्टिकल होने चाहिए प्रैक्टिकल का मतलब आज अपने देश की आबादी सवा सौ करोड़ है 130 करोड़ है वो तो ठीक है कि अभी मुंबई का एक प्लान डेवलपमेंट करो तो क्या करेंगे तो इनको हटा दो इनको हटा दो तो दैट इज नॉट फिजिबल आई नो देर आर मेनी आर्किटेक्चर मे बी हियर मेनी आर्किटेक्चर क्रिटिसाइज एस आर एस स्कीम यू आर क्रिएटिंग वर्टिकल स्लम बट द प्रॉब्लम बिफोर अस We cannot do it. It is not politically sustainable, and even from human angle point of view, it is not correct to displace such a large population. And so, when we are going to frame any policy or you are suggesting any policies, at that time, you should keep in mind the problems of the. सोसाइटी 
and which solution should be the practical solutions. I must congratulate and give thanks to our Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi because he right from the day one he is saying that he will adhere to the Paris Convention. Despite Trump officially withdrawn from the Paris Convention, India stated that no, we will fulfill our achievement by 2023 because the real reason behind Narendra Modi ji's this commitment is that sustainable development thought may be new for the western countries but it is not alien or new to Indian culture. In our culture, this concept is already there. हम अभी मेरे को एक पौधा आपने भेज दिया हम तो बहुत बार तुलस का पौधा देते हैं कि तुलस होनी चाहिए घर में क्योंकि तुलस ही ऐसा एक में वो प्लांट है जो रात को भी ऑक्सीजन छोड़ने का काम करता है हमारी संस्कृति में ये कब कहा गया है वसुधैव कुटुंब कम ये तो अभी ये बोलने लगे सब लोग पंद्रह बीस पच्चीस बरस में sustainable development, you should be friendly with environment. Santa Tukaram Ji ne usi samay ka ki vruksha valli vanachari ama soyari ki ped pude ye to hamare searcher hai. Mai parso ek article padh raha tha Times of India mein aaya tha front page pe, edit page pe. China mein कोविड को लेकर आज भी लॉकडाउन चल रहा है स्ट्रिक्ट लॉकडाउन चल रहा है जो हमारा थॉट है ना वो थॉट ये सहकार्य का थॉट है हम ये नहीं मानते कि सृष्टि नेचर और व्यक्ति इस पे संघर्ष है हमारा थॉट ये है कि नेचर और व्यक्ति में एक सहकार्य है वो प्राणी पक्षी पंछी सब सबसे हम उनको इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ द अवर प्लेनेट अवर सिस्टम अवर इकोसिस्टम ये मानने की सोच ये भारतीय संस्कृति की सोच है मैं वो जिक्र कर रहा था टाइम्स ऑफ इंडिया के आर्टिकल का तो जब उन्होंने ग्रीन रिवोल्यूशन को प्रारंभ किया तब चाइना ने अपन ज्यादा मराठी हे मंटो चिमनी स्पैरो वो स्पैरो अनाज खाती है इसके लिए चाइना में 53 या 63 में मुझे साल अभी याद नहीं वो आर्टिकल में लिखा था दे किल्ड वन बिलियन स्पैरो और उसका बैड इफेक्ट हुआ स्पैरो खत्म हुई तो स्पैरो जिनको खत्म करती थी वो बढ़ने लगे और चाइना के एग्रीकल्चर रिवोल्यूशन में बहुत बड़े प्रॉब्लम आ गए और इसके लिए ये हमारा थॉट है वसुधैव कुटुंब हम कभी ये मानते नहीं है कि हमारे में और सृष्टि में संघर्ष है नेचर और आदमी ने ये को एग्जिस्टेंस करना चाहिए और इसके लिए मुझे लगता है कि नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने ये बात कही क्योंकि जो हमारा मूल ये थॉट है और आज दुनिया भी उसी थॉट को लेकर आगे चलने का प्रयास कर रहे मैं एक ही पॉलिटिकल बात आखिर में कहूंगा क्योंकि कई बार ऐसा होता है कि एनवायरमेंट ये वो ये विषय में हमको बहुत प्रयास करना है बहुत आगे जाना है अपने देश में बहुत सारी समस्या है आई एम टोटली एग्री बट एट द सेम टाइम अपने को इस विषय में अक्कल सिखाने का काम या अधिकार ये किसी भी पाश्चिमात्य देश को नहीं है क्योंकि आज जो ग्लोबल वार्मिंग हो रहा है उसके लिए भारत जिम्मेदार नहीं है उसके लिए कोई जिम्मेदार होगा तो ये वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज और अमेरिकन जैसे जो देश है उन्होंने जो 
एनवायरमेंट के कंसर्न को लताड़ते हुए उन्होंने जो डेवलपमेंट किया वो डेवलपमेंट के कारण ये आज ग्लोबल वार्मिंग की समस्या है हमको सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट करना है ग्लोबल वार्मिंग को कम भी करना है और वो करते समय हमारे 130 करोड़ पॉपुलेशन को गुड लाइफ देना है ईज ऑफ लिविंग भी देना है उनको अच्छे मकान हर घर में इलेक्ट्रिकसिटी हर घर में अच्छा माहौल ये सब करके तो इसके लिए सोलर एनर्जी है ऐसे बहुत सारी बातें मैं कह सकता हूं बट टाइम कंसेंट इज वेरी ग्रेट सो आई विल नॉट स्पीक लॉट ऑन ऑल दिस इश्यूज बट अगेन आई वुड लाइक टू से दैट बाय गोइंग टूवर्ड्स सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट वी शुड ऑलवेज कीप दैट दिस इज द ओरिजिनल थॉट ऑफ इंडिया इंडियन कल्चर एंड वाइल वी आर मार्चिंग टूवर्ड दिस सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट प्रैक्टिकेबिलिटी and with the help of science i rest assured that in coming years india will also achieve our sustainable development goal as in invest in paris convention again thanks for me uh, thanks to you for inviting me for today's uh, seminar once again thanks to dhakur college and mr sarodai thank you Thank you, sir. Those were very enlightening words, and I'm sure everybody has taken your words to heart and will go ahead trying to be sustainable. Uh, once more, audience, please a big round of applause for our dynamic and firebrand Emily, who has won a lot of awards and all. And what he says, please understand that we are all one. There is no difference between nature and us. We have to always try to be cooperative. We have to be adjusting and allow everybody to survive, as he said. Thank you, sir, once again for inspiring us all. We would now request Shri Atul ji to kindly present a token of appreciation to Anushka Deshpande, a student of Thakur Public School, for her inspiring words.
they are joining with their ministry and all. So please make a welcome for them. Hello, sir. Sir, your voice is not coming. Please unmute, sir. Good morning, 
ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure to have uh, given this opportunity to uh, for this such a lovely event. Uh, Metal Gold Coin Group on Madagascar is uh, planning to have uh, Education City and as part of their uh, social development uh, responsibility in the Republic uh, of Madagascar. And we are proud to announce that this uh, project is an initiative taken by the Indian community living there. And uh, we as uh, the experts are joining hands with the Mr. Kushwinder's initiative uh, to create a, a sustainable uh, education system which uh, includes various aspects. Uh, I will just go over uh, the screen share and uh, try to share the, some indications of this project which we are, uh, have worked out and likely to execute in the next year or so. Uh, allow me, uh, give me 10 seconds to uh, uh, share the screen. So the presentation is on the screen, you can proceed. Yeah, so, so gentlemen, uh, Hello. 
Sir, if possible, can you put it on the full screen mode? Yes, sir. Okay, so remember the Sir, you are audible, you can continue, sir. Hello, can you see me? Yes, sir. Hello. Sir, you are audible, you can begin okay. with the presentation, sir. Yeah. Right, perfectly fine. So, Sir, can you share the PDF file? Yeah. Can you see the uh, presentation now? Yes, sir. The presentation is on. You can begin. Okay. Right. So, the Madagal Band Group uh, is planning for an education city which is uh, having the uh, sustainable development goals. And we will share about the process which we have taken uh, with you all today. And thank you for giving us the opportunity. Just in brief, I would like to highlight that Madagal Group is a group of company based in Madagascar where the founder president is Mr. Kushwinder Singh. He is a, a person of Indian origin and based in Madagascar for 15 years. He has been involved in uh, various aspects of government and ministries and agencies working in the area of advisory and consultancy, mining and steel manufacturing, agriculture and development of oil and energy resources in the country as well as infrastructure development. Based on his expertise and experience, we have proposed to the government of creating an Oxford for Madagascar, which is uh, a multi-speciality uh, university complex which we are creating for a uh, space of 300 hectare of land, which will incorporate uh, many aspects uh, of uh, the sustainable energy mod module. Uh, that's the brief about this education city. Is uh, we have a residential zones planned uh, for at least more than a lakh uh, plus people will be based in these uh, education institutes over a period of 300 hectare of land and more than 22 lakh plus construction, uh, square meter construction area which will come for these uh, institutes. These 15 plus institutes will have multi-speciality domain. There will have research labs in the field of medicine, uh, uh, engineering and other aspects of pharmacy and other uh, uh, domains including IT. Uh, the training institutes uh, will also come up to create the skill development uh, capability for the country, which is uh, the need of the art. Uh, we have uh, identified certain uh, sustainable development goals which are focused for us. We are looking to achieve these goals uh, in every aspect uh, of the education city which we are planning and building. Uh, the technology innovation will be the key for us where we have the focus area always kept on the renewable energy on a sustainable model where we are using solar, wind energy and other uh, resources uh, to keep the carbon footprints at the lowest. Uh, we have green spaces created all around the area so that uh, the healthy living can be proposed and the environmental protection uh, uh, goal can be achieved. We have created the urban uh, structures and then we have a and does not uh, impinge on any way on the
the resources of Kirby. So if you have a, a, a keep your eyes on the screen, you'll find that the area is very modular and uh, capable of expanding into the design where we have residential complexes, education zones, the agriculture and organic farming in and around these areas. So this will help us out in creating uh, a sustainable living come uh, in the environment which is more pronounced and closer to the nature for which the Madagascar is known for its existence and having uh, contributed to the maximum number of species in, in and around uh, for the biodiversity in, in the area. Uh, the goals which we intend to keep the uh, pace with as well as like to achieve uh, are uh, for the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, interest area, the goal 3 of uh, health and well-being, uh, goal 4 of uh, quality education, goal 6, uh, six for clean water and sanitization, goal uh, uh, 7 on affordable and clean energy, goal 8 for uh, uh, decent work and economic growth of the area, goal 9 of industry innovation and infrastructure, goal 11 of system peace as a whole and lastly the goal 12 for responsible consumption and production. If you see that with this kind of uh, concept we are likely to achieve all these goals in, in our focus. So once again that uh, the focus area of MG, uh, Marigold Wine Group uh, will be uh, a, a triangular focus of living standards, environmental protection and education and innovation. Combining these we have been able to achieve all the goals in, in our project and that is why uh, we feel that this is the way the future of a living and sustainable life can be achieved in an area which is still uh, at the uh, point of uh, earning its uh, presence in the uh, area, especially in the developing countries. Thank you very much and uh, thanks for uh, giving us the opportunity to share our views on this forum. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much sir for sharing the presentation. Okay, I now call upon co-convener of Think Tank, Akanksha Varde, to come up on stage with her team for the NGO Summit.
big round of applause for her audience. Thank you. So, uh, like before diving in, what I'd give you, I'd like to give you a brief outline of what I expect this session to be. So, this is basically NGO summit, that is the non-governmental organizations, that is students, institutions, the government, the industries, which are not governed by the government, would be participating in a panel discussion. And here we would like to deliberate and come up with ideas that can be implemented to achieve the SDGs. So, uh, like before that, I would like to just give you a brief insight of what kind of work we do. And for that, I had some pictures to show you.
Okay, so by the time these guys set up the presentation, let us have a break, icebreaker session. So, what do you guys understand about SDGs? Let's start from there. Like, what is your perception of SDGs? Anyone from the audience? People sitting at the left side behind, maybe someone from you can come up. What is SDG? What do you think of it? Do you want to say something? Okay, so I guess I'll have to start here itself from what is an SDG. So, as we all know, there's a United Nations thing, which is a coalition of all the countries in the world. So, they have basically set up 17 objectives for all the countries to be achieved in order to achieve a sustainable uh, development. So, these objectives are solving our basic issues like uh, no poverty, zero hunger, access to good health, uh, sustainable cities and communities, apart from that global partnerships for development. So, uh, around 17 of such goals which need to be uh, achieved by the end of year 2030. So for that, all the countries are making their uh, own strides, they are uh, developing in their own ways, taking their own actions and uh, low. so this uh, conference was held last year as well in Goa. But then the thing we realized was instead of just talking, we need to focus uh, on action oriented uh, plans. Like what can actually be done, like there will be a similar summit next year. So in the next year, we should be having some tangible in outputs with us that can be analyzed. So, for that, what actions can be done would be discussed today. Okay, so as I said, we have some of the uh, SDGs set up by the UN. So, the third SDG, what we have is access to good health and well-being. So, uh, what, like, I'll just show you a brief outline of what all things can be done. Like, this is just an idea of what we have done in the past and similar things can be done in the future as well. Like, uh, as I said, so Think India is basically a network of students from all the national institutions across the country. We have all the IITs, IIMs, NITs, ISERs, uh, the research laboratories with us. So, it's basically a student... Uh, network of students from all the national institutes who come and deliberate upon issues of national national interest and concern. So, uh, 20th of uh, July was the National Hepat Hepatitis Awareness Day. So, since it was uh, in coordination with the SDG number 3, we organized a hepatitis awareness program in collaboration with uh, ICMR, that is the Indian Council for Medical Research. And this was streamed across all the ICMR laboratories and in all the national institutes of the country. Along with this, we also did some offline uh, awareness campaigns with the local people involved. So the thing that we achieved with the help of this thing is that people were genuinely aware about hepatitis. How does it spread? What all can be done? What all kind of vaccines are present in the market currently? So... Yeah, so uh, we have our fifth or sixth SDG that is gender equality. So when we say about gender equality uh, in today's world that we see feminism is a hyped out topic. But then we should focus on like uh, giving equal mental cerebral opportunity for both women and men. So uh, the th to achieve that we did a talk on violence against women. We had people from all the backgrounds like we had people from the medical fraternity, we had people from the law fraternity. And we had people from the academia as well. So, uh, if we have, if we, like, what I'm trying to say is, if we have this kind of discussions, people would get to know okay, what are the problems faced by each sector and what can be done to overcome them. So, uh, we have another uh, SDG that is innovation, entrepreneurship, uh, innovation, infrastructure, and industries. So to achieve that goal, we did a skill development conference that is basically equipping students like us all with the entrepreneurship or innovation mindset thinking. And so for that, we had people from the business backgrounds and we also had startup founders who came up and delivered their lectures. So well, like they showed us like how innovative uh, thinking and how their mindset can ease our uh, or uh, improve our quality of living. 
So since this is a planning and architecture, I thought this would be a very relevant thing to share. Uh, like recently we did a session with the director of National Institute of Urban Affairs. Like uh, this year when the budget was uh, announced, uh, we just discussed on like what was the budget allotment for urban affairs and uh, that kind of thing. So we had this director with us. Apart from that, we have our own person, Mr. Akash Jha, who is currently leading Commonwealth's Infrastructure Forum and currently even the Indian Institute of Architects, he is a member there. So we had this session. He was present last year. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we also have like, as we said, like uh, the one of the major ways to solve any kind of problem is through entrepreneurship. That is, uh, and most importantly, in case of SDGs, it would be social entrepreneurship. When we say India is an agricultural country, we all know it has its own drawbacks. There are a lot of uh, challenges in the agricultural sector. It's very unorganized sector, which needs to be organized. So for the similar thing, we also like, uh, like it can be made a very profitable and sustainable business. Uh, it can be made a profitable and sustainable business. So for that, like you need proper uh, social entrepreneurs who come up and bring all the farmers together or maybe engineers like us who come up and set up food processing plants and like uh, instead of those food farm produce getting wasted, it can be converted into a useful commodity. So this was the same thing, startup showcase, like where we had uh, Mr. Burgess, Go Burgess Godrej with us from Godrej Ag Agrovent. Yeah, and finally our SDG 17, which says global partnerships. So as we all know, India this year is hosting the G20 presidency and uh, it is a very proud moment for all of us being Indians. So what uh, Think India did was we basically welcomed the G20 presidencies in all of our campuses across the country. Uh, so like there were talks and discussions. There are uh, like as we all know G20 has various forums like Y20, C20, T20, Women 20. So discussions were held and uh, like not just discussions. What we did was we actually came up with solutions, we compiled them and they were sent for uh, implementation. So it's not just about discussion, it, it is more about what you do after the discussion, how do you plan to implement. So uh, regarding the SDGs now, I would like to invite all the dignitaries. Vineet Virkar sir. sir and the principal yeah, on the dais. Okay, so like right now what I was thinking is maybe we could have of this thing as an interactive session. Like if uh, like there are people from now the architecture background, the academia background and myself from the student community. So if we could, like this, I plan to have this as an open forum when even people from the audience can participate and uh, share their insights. So uh, I think we should like discuss if, uh, like since the theme for our conference is salutogenic SDGs. So let's start from there itself. Like, uh, so would you like to enlighten us about how this conference do you think would it help in achieving those targets? Hello. Yeah. So basically, uh, the salutogenic SDGs, <coughs> salutogenesis is a medical term. Salutogenesis talks about like precaution is better than cure. In this uh, way, if we are targeting for 2030 agenda of UN, or we are targeting for 2050 agenda of UN, uh, what about the present and uh, near present? Uh, why we should not think of that uh, drastically? Why we are only targeting 2030, 2050? Yeah, of course, uh, the temperature, global temperature will rise and all that uh, global warming issues are going to uh, be addressed and it has to be controlled, no doubt. But while living right now, how we have and we can uh, make the change regarding the uh, global warming or any concerns of SDG. So this was the theme and it was uh, propagated from Cyprus by Dr. Salar Sala, uh, our global advisory member. So uh, we do have our uh, international global advisory member from our India. 
uh, IES uh, principal uh, Vineet Meerkar sir right now with us. Uh, we'll understand all the uh, ideas from uh, Vineet Meerkar sir also and uh, Dilesh Dolakya sir, he is professional organizations uh, chairman, I Indian Institute of Architects chairman. Even this is an open forum, live or and in person. Anyone can participate and we are trying to brainstorm and what she has asked right now, we are trying to find out that answer because last year we happened to do that and we understood that only intellectual gatherings and all these things, talking, writing and all these things remains on paper but how to participate and make effective participation in society not only in our regions, geographical regions but globally so we are trying to find out answers for the same question and the forum is open, you guys can participate any uh, idea is important and valuable to us. Hmm? Uh, so yes, uh, so like before actually deciding upon the action plan, I would like to understand like what is the organizational structure, like when we say any change is about to be brought, how do we plan to implement it at the local level or uh, like the state level, like sitting here we do talk about the world but everything cannot be controlled by us directly, we can start at our home itself, right? So, how do we like, what is the structure or what is the geographical location that we can cover right now? I guess that's what you rightly said about, you have to start from local and the local starts from your home. So that is where we should be uh, starting this journey. Uh, the journey starts from uh, awareness, that is a very important aspect. Awareness and sensitization is a very important and a key uh, aspect to start any action plan. If you are sensitized, like I in the morning I said, uh, I was uh, I was very kind of impressed with the kind of students of the uh, uh, school, the kind of discipline, the kind of culture, the the way they have uh, kind of had the enthusiasm about the SDG in at that early stage of their uh, early formative stage of their learning which is very important. So I guess it's important to start making awareness first at the, the very local which is your home level. I guess it is also important for this young generation uh, to get exposed. I guess the exposure is in terms of information is very much available because they can data mine the things through uh, the IT <coughs> platforms now much better than any of their parents. So now it is the, the, the role because they are only the concerned people, they are on the stake stakeholders which will be facing the adversities in the future. As, uh, as the, the Selvijanik uh, goal says that we need to be proactive and acting on a prevention. So I guess if, if they, instead of they being waiting for the people to do, I guess they have to take the, the, uh, the kind of uh, responsibility on their own shoulders to kind of, kind of get aware, get sensitized. And what I feel that uh, being a, a different social structure now, the, nowadays the parents listen to you people. In our case, we used to listen to our, our parents. So it is now the responsibility shifts on your shoulders where you start giving these sensitivities towards your parents, showing what we can do from your actions and the kind of parents will follow. So I, I believe this is the kind of the kind of, if you start with this local, I guess there are lots <coughs> to achieve on the larger level. And many times the policy uh, has been designed by governments, but they doesn't get implemented because if I am not ready to accept the policy, then government cannot pressurize me to do that. So if we start from here, the government, whether the government brings a policy or not, it doesn't matter, I guess we will be able to achieve that anyway. So I guess that is what my take on that first. Would you like to add something? Yeah, I would like to add the same thing. It is uh, we who can make change the world and not the others. We have to do it on our own and if we have the self, in, in, uh, self uh, insight of the things to carry out then we can make the change and we can change the world. Because on, with the government policies we cannot make the things change. You yourself have to uh, do it so that the things can change and then the world will change accordingly. So I would say you should first do it for yourself, from your inside you, uh, you uh, change yourself and make it a happy world. Uh, okay.
like I have a question to follow up on this. Like when we say like you should start changing, it's like not uh, even we ourselves are not aware about a lot of things. So what kind of uh, specialization or training or workshops do you think should be conducted like uh, to make people aware or to, or to impart them with the necessary skills that are required? Uh, earlier it was very difficult but now there is a lot of social media available, there is a lot of Google news there. It is up to us again what we think is right we should follow that and then based on that we should go ahead. I think uh, it is your own self mind which helps you to uh, uh, achieve your uh, goal. I just want to add to this is, uh, as I said earlier also, there are lots which was there in our culture, in our tradition. If you start looking back and reason out very positively, earlier what I have seen, earlier like 10 years back, we used to reason, we used to question, the, uh, we used to question lots of things which was inherent in our uh, culture uh, in a very negative manner because we were looking at our best and then trying to question that why we are doing this. We didn't have answers because we never seek the answers, right? Now this, this research is going to kind of create that avenue for you and research need not start uh, at post-grad level or uh, graduate level can start right from the end schooling for that matter. It's only what we need to kind of create is a system to uh, ask the right questions. And I guess the people like us, like academicians, uh, the kind of people who are in a profession, we should be having coming together and try to navigate why is the kind of thing. If you can do that, I guess there will be lots of uh, kind of questions will be answered, there will be lots of insights will be kind of uh, uh, made aware as what you would ask, how you do that. So, if you start creating and start uh, kind of believing in what we have been doing up till now, lots of things will start coming up and surface out in a very positive way. Uh, and then the things, the journey will start, not otherwise. Yeah, take just, just this conference platform also will generate some research ideas. This would be also providing a, as a think tank for NGOs, professional organizations, institutes coming together and implementing the uh, bright ideas from the researchers or the students or uh, uh, the idea makers. Right now we are talking with uh, different uh, parts of in different parts of globe with different people from World Environment Forum Chairman to UN Commonwealth Chairman to uh, conveners to other people also. So uh, brilliant ideas from today's conference are supposed to be just uh, taken up and adopted by our organizations uh, like IIA also, like ours also, institutional organizations like TSAP and all. And these people can come up with an idea and like uh, MLA, good people like MLAs, like uh, right now what we are blessed with the presence of this Atulji. Uh, again, uh, different ministry people, Mantra, they are here and there. We can again uh, go approach these people and tell them ki how we can get it done. And these are the ideas from these gatherings, what we are trying to uh, do until now. So this can be one of the options, like generating the ideas from the research papers taking bright ideas and putting in the report report, presenting it to UN uh, and presenting it to the Mantrale Ministry, uh, Delhi and uh, even the Mumbai Mantrale. So this can be one of the approaches means, for answer for you one of the questions, like how we can proceed ahead. Okay, so basically it's kind of entrepreneurship again. Uh, like one more thing I would like to add, uh, if anyone from the audience has any questions, you can just raise your hands. Yeah, even you can join us in the You can join us, it's a live forum, it's a free forum. Anyone can join us, anyone can speak. You want to share your ideas, you're most welcome. Yeah, uh, like to follow up on what you said, Ravindra sir, I had a question. Like You said uh, we should be uh, targeting the research and how it can be put to practical use. Uh, like we see currently India's startup ecosystem is booming. We have a lot of incubation centers in place which are already given up this task. So where do you think are we going wrong and like why is it not happening at the pace at which we expect it to happen? Vinisa. I, I think so. Again, the awareness about this uh, startup ecosystem 
to jungle uh, one. Uh, uh, unfortunately, what I see, uh, the ecosystem has only proliferated to more technical educationist or the younger generation, like you are an engineer, you are from IIT, but it's not reached uh, to other kind of uh, uh, student forums of different sectors. So it's a very collaborative approach which is required for startups. You cannot, you have an idea, to execute an idea require a financial aspect. You require to understand how the common people react to an idea, whether that scalability is there or not. So there are lots of people come together. But there are lots of people who are not participating, feeling that I may not be a part of that. So I guess, uh, the people who have already started, if you start creating an inclusive environment for this ecosystem, I guess more and more people will start believing that I can be a part of it. Because I don't think so, the startup up till now had been projected from the IT industry because earlier startups were more of IT based. Now they are becoming product based. Now we are also kind of addressing lots of environmental problems last four years through uh, this thing. People have now started doing startups on the basis of sustainable uh, kind of products and that its development. So it is now taking a pace, but more you include the common uh, kind of folks into this, uh, I guess the people will, so it's, it's, it's a belief and the confidence which is to be built up with the kind of commons where they can feel that I can participate and more uh, we collaborate, I guess we can, kind, we can raise this bar and the, the exponential growth is possible. That is what my opinion is. Yeah, collaboration uh, for the startups. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea. Even we, when we were speaking with Jaydeep Malviya sir from South Asia, Rotary SRI. So Rotary SRI, what they do, they uh, come uh, with an idea and they execute it uh, nationally, internationally. And they try to count the footprint of it. Like what carbon footprint emission we have saved upon. So this was a brilliant idea or brilliant approach by Rotarians. So why can't uh, we guys also, our ministries, government and all uh, other uh, functionaries of uh, ministries or government can approach in this way. Yeah, we do have some rating systems for buildings. Yeah, we do have rating systems for buildings. Uh, uh, when we, I was speaking with Akansha, the same thing we, uh, came up, came up uh, on the surface, the uh, rating systems, are they there, are they in the place? But we have a beautiful message by Shkidish Beri sir, uh, eloquent architect, international architect. Uh, if you give me a moment, I'll just read that uh, uh, message by, given by him for the conference itself. Uh, it is addressing the reality of the rating systems, what he feels like, because he is a person who, is work, who has been working since decades in the, uh, this thing, uh, sustainability. Just a moment, I'm just uh, trying to fetch the same message. And he has addressed it very well, it's very sensitively. He is a, a preacher, a teacher, a poetic, uh, he does, does his poems in architecture and very beautiful architectural buildings he has gone for. So he uh, congratulates the platform and says introspection of the SDG goals appear to be an appropriate topic for the international conference, especially in, in today's scenario, when all the sustainability goals are rampantly manipulated, hypocritically justified and dishonestly certified. So this is what uh, he means to say like uh, there should be transparency but uh, what if you are just paying and getting the certification. So is it helping us in any way? for getting more sustainable. My words may appear harsh, but I have personally had so many experiences of such people and such institutes as it has become a trendy necessity these days to talk about sustainability. People from all fields like to mention how their product or project is green and sustainable, when in reality it is not. I wish this conference all the best in conveying and understanding that true sustainability is basically an attitude to life of caring and concern for everything and everybody on this damaged planet when our greedy self-centered anthropocentric attitude dissolves into his holistic attitude of oneness empathy and compassion these sustainable development goals will be met on their own so this is another part like his psychology says like when we uh, are uh, in sync with nature, 
we are totally sustainable. So he says, uh, wonderfully he has stated that. Even uh, PM Agenda also says in October, they said like, environment friendly lifestyle. So this is what PM announced it on 20th October. So these are the ways one can go approach and whenever there is a mass movement again, again this uh, for this uh, sustainability issues, then and then only uh, we can have change. And when the students and the younger people are getting involved and they are uh, activity, act activating the change, then that will make a sense because all things means uh, older people deciding for the younger people, those perspectives, they are understanding totally or impartially that will uh, not make sense. So why not get them involved? So that's why this forum also is trying to get you guys involved, not the researchers only, but the younger ones also, those whose brilliant ideas, because you've got various things, various exposures nowadays, and you can come up with brilliant ideas to come up with uh, different solutions for the SDGs. Yeah. yeah, so like when we speak about ideas, it uh, reminds me of a person who, who we have between us, like my junior at Institute and Think India Mumbai's convener. So currently he's working on a project for uh, butanol, that is for with uh, fuels yeah so like similarly all of us would have would be having some ideas we can come up we can commercialize them or uh, make them in a practical or make them uh, eligible for a larger application so one thing I'd like to follow up on is like you mentioned about the PM's agenda so uh, the government is doing a lot actually to create awareness like we see uh, there are national hackathons being organized uh, to solve problems given up by the different ministries. Uh, there is a national innovation contest being organized by the government of India. And these uh, programs do seem to reach the ground real, the students entire two tier three colleges. Uh, like there is a lot of participation. This year itself we had around 15,000 plus ideas submitted for the hackathons. So like the government is doing its part. How do you think we as academicians or people from the academia itself can create more awareness in it among the common citizens? Like the students somehow it directly or indirectly would be exposed to these ideas since they are in the community. But the common people don't come across these things that often. So how can we reach them? That, that is the uh, point you have pointed out over here. Because, uh, unless until there is a mass movement. So for getting the mass uh, encouraged about these things, we can go with one of the discussions what we were having with uh, prior to this conference also with different organizations. Let's take up uh, and adopt one of the metro stations and come up with SDG awareness uh, uh, detailings over there on the metro station itself. And a uh, lot of footfall and eyeballs going on on a busy metro station will still aware uh, daily thousands and thousands of people uh, and uh, that way we can generate mass in one of the cities then if the idea clicks why not every city why not uh, other uh, mediums also uh, this can be one of the solutions uh, what we were trying to tack upon and uh, estimate upon yeah would you like to add something yeah uh, i keep on saying this a statement that you have to be inclusive and when I say inclusive, uh, whatever we do, we need to kind of uh, create awareness and interface with a kind of common mass. Simple gesture like putting up a work of whatever we do in the college, if it has been concerned to the society, uh, putting up an exhibition, open exhibition for a people of your own vicinity invite the kind of people uh, in that vicinity of the college, expose them, allow the students to talk and talk to the kind of common people. And is only what I see is what we talk about when I am a professional of, as an architect, if you are an IT person, you are a chemical engineer. I guess we need to kind of cross our boundaries from our own domain to be in the shoes of the common. And what is that person aspires from us? is what we need to talk about. Many times what we are being trained to talk about our own field and our own jargons, which normally is not been, been getting addressed uh, uh, by a common uh, mass. So I guess we need to learn to address these common issues of a, of, of a, a, a society. 
through our interventions, whatever small what we are doing, and try and try to create that interface with small exhibitions, small talks. You invite the people to your own vicinity to understand the problems. I guess innovation is can be only addressed or can be done when there are issues. See, it cannot be done on the blank mind, right? If there are issues, anything, whether it's a social, financial, technical. So issue is an important key for innovation. Without issue, you cannot generate an idea, right? So that is a, that is a basic framework for innovation. So to if you want to innovate, you need to understand common. And there are lots of ideas can only come because you there are lot many issues which can come from the common. And I guess you being creating a, a startup ecosystem, there are many people are joining. Uh, the saturation point can come if we are not kind of kind of interfacing with the kind of comments because the moment you interface with this common issues are generated issues are been discussed and that is why the ideas will come so I guess that is what I be believe that the academician can create where we can interface because right from the schooling uh, in Indian culture the education becomes a primary uh, goal uh, for a parent and that is why they almost they're, they live for the half of the time they live for uh, their world's education right uh, they do everything for that so I guess if you start connecting because they have that emotional connection so if you can create this interface I guess lots of ideas can generate because lots of issues can be understood yeah, yeah necessity is the mother of invention as we say uh, yeah, and like when we say about connecting with the common people, I feel like we youngsters can use social media as a wonderful platform for that. Like currently we see there are many middle-aged uh, citizens of our country also being very active on the social media and youngsters are completely glued to it as we know. So I think here like uh, using our platforms which are available like for just so like uh, Facebook or Instagram, we can create a lot of uh, awareness about this thing by creating reels. Uh, like for example what I believe like what we do actually is when we do any kind of activity we create a buzz on social media first around it uh, and then we like uh, after the session is done we kind of given the inputs okay, this is what we achieved through the session this is what we try to achieve from the inputs from this session so I think this can be done at a greater scale like uh, for this this conference is an example like here whatever the outputs that we receive can be compiled well and can be distributed to the masses to be understood and implemented. So yeah and apart from that like what do you think are the different uh, like marketing or uh, distribution channels that we can use to create awareness like booklets or something like what do you think would be most effective? How do we reach the public basically? already has said that social media becomes an important channel but is social media uh, who you are targeting which platform you are targeting uh, like when you say that the people are glued to social media but different sector age groups stick to different social media platforms our generations are still on the facebook partly on insta your generation is only on insta and snapchat and not on the facebook so I guess you need to understand where and who you are targeting and according to that you need to kind of, now once you put up a reels, who will be seeing that and for what purposes. The people from the 40s and above, they look social media from the entertainment perspective many times. Some small part of it is the information that only happened because of the Covid hit us. Earlier it was because it was, I required that information for various survival techniques, survival purposes, so I went into that. But otherwise, you see, many of the kind of people, they do do that. Uh, majority of the young generation also look from the other perspective. So how you sensitize also, so how you utilize the platform very correctly. Now you don't know, you know the influencers. There are how many influencers who talk sensitive, sensitivity through their reels and how much, how much is their followership and versus the kind of reels which you put for entertainment and the kind of influence of which you have. So you need to understand a platform correctly. So what is being taken, so what the algorithms are being created only for the purpose of more and more viewership and more and that is why you can put up the ads and that is why you can earn. 
so the whole game of social media and the content creation is been governed by various other things so how as a as as a user how you can change that how you can create a correct content which also appeals the masses at the same time informs uh, the thing is very important because many times the reels are created just because the intention because i always say the intention is very important i intend to create a reel to get a viewership and followership so that if i have if i hit 10k that means there is something which i can earn from so the intent is not for reaching the message intending to get my viewership so i guess i guess somewhere down the line we need to kind of assess the social media also critically sensitively and then utilize this platform correctly then only we will achieve our goals many times it reaches 30 seconds hits you but at the and another 30 seconds you kind of forget also because there is another 30 second video which is completely different uh, place because of the some algorithm to you and that is why whatever you are sensitized for that 30 seconds get completely blurred up with the next video so i guess it is what we have to do you can start creating our own social media platforms with the startups which can have that sensitivity and then can project that where you can now achieve that otherwise social media is a very important platform but how you it gets utilized how it has been projected if you don't understand that critically i don't think so you will be able to reach it the kind of intended goals through that that's what i see Uh, yeah, yeah but uh, the word uh, you used right now was marketing na uh, akanksha uh, so yeah. instead of marketing why can't we call it educating uh, why can't we educate people and when we call education why not uh, we get it incorporated into the education policy new education policy <laughs> now brilliant example of the same thing like is dg is incorporated by thakur school of architecture planning in this syllabus students of final year working upon their thesis taking one of the sdgs so this is a brilliant approach so this is one institute uh, many other institutes are also doing that but not all of the institutes are doing that so why can't these ideas can be incorporated into the national education policy so through education awareness would be more uh, appreciable and into their rooms into their uh, books and uh, it can uh, be so called marketed if you want to use that word towards the masses in means uh, in huge number if every books uh, one to first to 10th uh, standard students books have these all these sdgs over there and their lifestyle as uh, pm modi ji said like environment and lifestyle so this kind of approach if you are going about uh, this kind of uh, culture we are trying to imbibe into the society then it's going to help ultimately because uh, technically speaking when uh, an indian person leaves uh, Uh, a daily lifestyle he is emitting how much carbon emissions it's uh, almost like three carbon emissions let's say uh, just for the sake of number but when an american person leaves uh, in his one day he emits almost like 20 times more emission than what an indian person is doing means by using luxurious lifestyle accessories and uh, amenities and instruments and tools and vehicles and all that stuff so uh, they are exaggerating their needs means the, the things uh, don't need to be that complicated simple things can also be uh, feel and uh, can serve the purpose of like whatever function we are targeting like transportation yeah of course transportation now it was not uh, required for transporting like okay there was another same e20 also like there there was one uh, paper by it in the like uh, leaders coming over there through flights and wasting so means fly, private jets and this much of money would be wasted on which could have been directly given to some of the cities and they could have this under developed cities and they could have just helped that those cities to grow for uh, decades uh, this could have been done by uh, doing the virtual meet also so these other thought processes are happening so nevertheless uh, it will start molding in afterwards uh, it will take time uh, to have that mindset uh, but that is right or wrong we don't know but uh, time will prove it but education is the best option i guess and teachers uh, deal with students and uh, these people have the brilliant uh, means they have this basis uh, that they come across different ideas so they can share their ideas also and this can uh, go into a rapport report and it can be sent to the un we have been confirmed and affirmed by the un representatives that you send whatever details are being produced in this conference and uh, we would be taking it up in the united nations academic impact so this is an opportunity again ministry is also supporting and backing up such causes so whatever you wish to say any any 
let it be anything whatever you wish to say as in you can uh, just uh, suggest on that yeah oh. Okay, yeah. So, like, I think now we have established uh, the need for such awareness. Uh, let's move towards action. Like, what all can be done? Like, my question to all three of you is, like, uh, what are the three action plans that you have in your mind can be implemented to achieve this SDGs? Like, uh, not thinking about long term, just in the next one year. Like, what can produce some tangible outcome which can be measured using some parameters? Uh, like as you said education so the number of uh, projects happening on this thing could be one of the parameters so similarly what all things can you uh, like can you suggest that we can take action upon and it can be measured because like we need to keep a track of how much progress we are making Simple, uh, uh, simple things we, I, I, we stay in Mumbai there are people who are doing architecture we, are, we believe that we are to intervene uh, to creating something. That means we will be using the resources. At the same time, when we use the resources, there are lots of things which gets, like in, in Mumbai, majority of the works which happens are the redevelopment. That means for doing development, I have to break something which is existing. The CND becomes an important uh, criteria and concern which Supreme Court also has been we have been blessed now that they have removed the ban on CAD and that is why we are able to work. Delhi, Mumbai and metro cities like us. So, the people who are here, if you immediately start thinking, if for, from an education perspective, I start thinking that whenever I am asking these people to design in any, any of the hypothetical or maybe real-time work, if we can address this CND as a basic kind of criteria by which you can measure your design, that how much you are producing, how much you are using. So if you start calculating, many times what happened that we being a, a designers, uh, we try to avoid the, the, the kind of mathematics of the design. We try to believe that we create a space at the same time, we, and that is only the thing which we need to do. But if we start sensitizing and try to ask the right questions in our project for that matter, that okay, if I ask tomorrow onwards that, how much CND waste your project is going to generate and you calculate the carbon footprint out of that, uh, I guess that will be a small step but it's a huge step. So it's as an as a action plan I can immediately do that and sensitization will happen because those numbers will tell the students immediately that oh, oh my god I'm, my intervention is going to do this so that I don't have to ingrain externally the sensibility and the sustainability in my project. If that gets ingrained because numbers shows a lot because whenever somebody says we show statistics to kind of impose and uh, scare also for that matter. So simple things like this number games it comes to education uh, as an action plan. I guess uh, we can achieve a lot. right? So this is a small step can uh, kind of become a, a, a big intervention and the sensitization which can be calculated because if I know how to how to calculate my footprint in terms of CND waste and the carbon uh, emissions, then in my profession I will do the same thing. If I do the same thing, then I will be able to sensitize my client that whatever you are doing will be a problem. So, and then when you go to profession, if I connect that to uh, economics, if I say that if I can reuse this, that means you are going to be benefiting your pocket, I guess the developer will also start understanding and accepting your idea. Problem is that we don't want to address these things and that is why the problem occurs. Mm. As a designer, if I start understanding and if I can make a relevance of that, you know that unless until you make any idea economically relevant, then only it proliferates and can scale up and become a startup. Otherwise, it will remain at an idea stage or IP property as such. So for that, I guess if you start as and addressing these uh, whomsoever are here in, from architecture, I guess if you start addressing these numbers very correctly through your design, I'm not saying that you need to restrict your imagination, but whatever you do, if you can put a number to that, I guess that small action plan can take a huge kind of uh, awareness and the kind of intervention which will be beneficial for achieving these goals, right? And simple things like as a citizens, I don't want to waste food. 
if I don't waste food, that means other person may have a food. That means I can make sure that uh, the food for e e uh, everybody, equity for everybody can start happening that. So I guess that is why it was there as a, as, a, as a culture for us. I guess we are trying to aim this. That is why I, I always say that social media is making, I can, they are digressing you to kind of think and introspecting. So I guess it's important how you use the social media game. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. This was a very wonderful input actually. Yeah. Like we do have such thing in our own industry. In chemical industry, for the waste generated, we have a thing called E factor. And it needs to be reported for every project. Like what is the amount of waste you are generating per kg of product you manufacture. So this can be implemented in other manufacturing industries and uh, allied sectors as well. Wonderful. Yeah, carbon and footprint uh, calculation, uh, I just uh, like to add up. There, there is one website on your, uh, Google, you can just uh, count by carbon footprint. So you can analyze that carbon footprint for your own uh, individual. Uh, for a day, for an annual basis and you can track upon monthly, yearly, likewise you have that uh, calories and all that intake for the diets and all that. Similar kind of uh, website is also available. Uh, this brilliant idea sir has told uh, right now that can always uh, educate and keep uh, the people to keep them updated and uh, resolving the issues of carbon emissions. Yeah, yeah uh, yes please, towards you. I would like to add on this that uh, we should, uh, ourselves also should uh, like introspect and we should also start, as you have seen the film also in the morning, you, you should start from your own, you should uh, that, like uh, segregating the garbage, uh, re, 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 uh, reusing the garbage or you can uh, recycle the things. You can help to reduce the footprint and make it a better environment to stay. So like uh, you can even, uh, in your house also you can start uh, vermi composting it, you can create your own manure. And you can start uh, using that, so it will reduce your carbon footprint. So in this way, you can sustain, make it a sustainable thing. Yes. Uh, thing I would like to add is like as we said about social media, uh, there are such networks existing right now which are currently like uh, totally dedicated towards sustainability. Like people from the sustainability domains are active on those networks. They keep on sharing what are the opportunities coming up, or what all uh, work is being done in country or across the globe as well. So there are such networks which we need to promote to students as well as people uh, like the general masses so that we can make better use of such platforms. And uh, one more the uh, like takeaway from this uh, question I feel is like we need to focus more upon the numbers rather than just qualitatively talking about things. I guess but again social media, those algorithms through this number game doesn't come to us problem is that, that there are people dedicated but it, does, it doesn't appear to you. The problem is that on a social media when I start looking at the reels, those unless and unless well, I have There's a completely new app and yeah. So, but for that it doesn't reach out. Kind of a, unless and I am interested. So right. First of all you need to be interested and in how the social media can make me interested. Once I say about something also the videos will come. Till that it will not come. So that is the thing. Other thing also about social media and this new startups which are working on online medium. I don't know how much kind of packaging base we are creating. So one time you are talk talking about Startup India, uh, you talk about sustainability, you are trying to make sure that you become entrepreneur. But what happened that we are only addressing uh, one of the kind of criteria, maybe by doing something in our startup or anything which you do. Many times, these 17 sustainable goals which have been created, people start addressing them individually or in couple. But I guess that's what I say that once you address one, you have to understand the impact on all together. So if you start thinking comprehensively, I guess then only you can you can become a sustainable. Because tomorrow, uh, it should not happen that to solve a problem, you create another 10 problems. That is what is happening, what I see from here onwards. That you are trying to address a problem because you are only looking at that problem very specifically. And unfortunately, Western research methods talk about that uh, uh, that you need you you create your scope and limitation. You can iron out saying that this is not my scope, and then produce the result, and which gets accepted. At the same time, when you do that, the other thing which you have left out is going to create another monster for you, which somebody else will take a research and do that. So maybe 
research domain can sustain, but not the not the planet as such. That's what I feel. Right, right. Uh, does anyone from the audience have anything to add? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. So, uh, I'm actually uh, very enlightened to be part of this conference. So, I'm working as an associate assistant professor in Thakur College of Architecture. So, I can completely relate to the uh, opportunities which <coughs> academics can offer to the people. Uh, I have a few ideas which uh, I've been sharing with my colleagues and students. So, uh, talking about them, like firstly, we need role models. Uh, what I believe is, if you have role models in the society, uh, there are people going to look up to you and I think each one of us here present here can act as a role model by starting with small steps and, uh, you know, promoting our set of people like, you know, uh, either through social media, either through our interactions, uh, we can do make a difference by being a role model. Secondly, I think uh, we need to reach out to the community at daily basis. Uh, it shouldn't happen like a seasonal uh, thing like you know we have a set of discussion every month or every year but we need to interact with community what are their issues what are the problems which they are facing uh, how can we reach uh, basically we can have a lot of uh, knowledge forums arranged for the community because i think a larger audience uh, needs that kind of awareness uh, you know uh, so in our college what we do is we do have a lot of social activities that we do so uh, the recent activity which we did was a green nookad activity so in that we promoted uh, you know the sustainable strategies amongst the common public so we did a lot of street plays for that so uh, i believe that to reach out to a wider audience you need to you know go into the community and you know try and talk about these issues have a discussions have some uh, skill sharing workshops maybe or have some knowledge forums so I do believe that uh, our students do have a lot of uh, enthusiasm, potential. We just need to reach out to them and you know uh, have an activity schedule planned for year-long activities and uh, do it for our community. So I think uh, it's a very enlightening uh, conference for all of us and of course for the students as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your input. Yeah, you rightly said like. Uh, we need to have more interaction between the student community and the local communities or citizens in general. Uh, students need to step out of their comfort zone and visit the communities and see what are the ground level problems that they are facing and come up with solutions. Uh, you can like maybe uh, if your institute has an NSS thing like they organize uh, camps in the villages so you can go visit there see what are the problems that the country is facing at ground level related to healthcare system or education system and then together we can uh, come up uh, again brainstorm and come up with solutions which can solve or uh, move towards or help us move towards a collective good and uh, as sir rightly said we should focus more on the numbers like we should try and incorporate uh, uh, into our reports what are the developments being made uh, quantitatively rather than just qualitatively analyzing things. So I think these are two important key takeaways from this uh, discussion that we can implement on an immediate basis and uh, I think we would have a good number of uh, reports or tangible outcomes from this which we can introspect next year or uh, the next uh, convention whenever we decide and meet up. So I think with this we can end the session here. Uh, thank you so much all the dignitaries for participating in the discussion and thank you audience for your inputs. Thank you. Thank you ma'am, it was very nice and as uh, he put it, it is very enlightening and I'm sure the students have found a lot of uh, takeaway from it. I now request uh, architect Ravindra sir to felicitate her with the uh,
an ocean is formed and bit by bit an awareness is created among the people to help sustainability become a part of their lifestyle. And the sessions today that we have had has proved that everybody is involved in it in their own little way. And so can you as an audience, as a participant, contribute your bit towards saving this world and being sustainable. To help restore, resurrect, retain the glory of nature and Mother Earth, it is vital that people from all walks of life contribute to the cause in whatever which way they can and make this world a beautiful place to live in. With this, we conclude this inaugural session for this two-day conference. I would like to uh, resume. So we thank all the all of, all the dignitaries on the uh, dais and request them to go down to their seats. And uh, thank you, everybody who were present online, offline, for being a part of this presentation and inaugural functions. It is very nice to have you all so actively involved in it. Request all the guests and presenters to proceed for the lunch on the third floor at TSA building. The students are requested to proceed for their own lunch and gather in a uh, study skill center which is in the Timsar building at 2, 2 p.m. for the paper presentations. Thank you everyone. A big round of applause to all of you and us. Thank you everybody for being a part of this novel function.